Hey, what's up, Podcast America? Welcome to episode 30 of the Enlightened Neanderthals. Hey. 38? Sure. Six. Are seven. 36. 37. Six. Above 35. Yeah. yeah. Somewhere. And before we get into the show notes, let's talk about the compassionate Viking, our best friend, Tyler Stanaway. And it's almost, I don't even know how to describe everything he's got going on over there, but go to his website, compassionateviking.com and listen to the Compassionate Viking podcast um, because it's always fascinating. And like I said, it's, it's, it's more than I can explain. And then what, uh, what do we got going on out at the range, Jordan? Uh, As far as the, (laughs) <laughs> that's just putting you on the spot well, well, well you know uh you can head out to uh training northwest's website uh training northwest llc and find all of the class schedules that i believe are being posted at the beginning of the year january 2nd so january 2nd and there to tease go. the rifleman camp a little bit it is it is scheduled for august 9 to 11 registration will go live on january 2nd it's capped at 18 participants and my guess is that it will fill up fast. So if it that's was an absolute blast last year. I know that. Good, good. I'm glad to hear it. And yeah. I know Mike said he's in this year. Oh, 100 percent. Okay, so yeah. the boy, the boys will be out there. Come on out, have a good time, learn a bunch of shit with us. And then finally, we've got Allegiance holsters, which great holsters. <laughs> Love it. <laughs> yeah. Uh oh. AllegianceHolsters.com and use code CHECKOUT or CHECKOUT code TNW10 and uh, save yourself a little bit of shipping there. So this was an awesome episode. Uh, One of my best friends, Manny Mata, Army buddy from back in the day, was on to share his story. He has a fucking wild story that I'm not even going to try to tease here. You guys are just going to have to listen to the episode. I'm just glad I, I finally realized what that bracelet on your wrist was. Oh, for real? Oh, really? 100%. No, oh. had no clue. So okay. this is a, a eye-opening episode for many different reasons. Y- you thought That's it great. was like a uh, <laughs> no, you're like your, t- tuberculosis Depp. warning. No, yeah, he's, yeah, like, yeah. Oh, he's into thought, rings and bracelets. It, yeah, I thought it was a bangle. <laughs> this whole time. A bangle. Holy shit! All right, you guys, enjoy the episode. All right, we're live on the mats here, and today is an awesome day because we have with us one of my best fucking friends. And a guy I met in 2nd Ranger Battalion way back in, I think, the year 2000, uh, Emmanuel Mata. And I guess to introduce him a little bit, I actually want to say that when when I first arrived at 2nd Ranger Battalion, you get assigned to your platoon. And, you know, they, they they introduce you to everyone in your squad. And we had a fairly junior squad at that time. Um... And so Mata was kind of like, we had one really strong team leader and one who was not. And Mata has really strong leadership capabilities. So even as an E3, you were almost like our, uh, like impromptu, not impromptu, but uh, you were like a quasi team leader in that squad, even at that time. Now it's, it's kind of too bad Greg's not here with us. Also, we can only fit four microphones on here because I think he would agree to that a little bit. But, Mata, take 30 seconds or 10 minutes and kind of introduce yourself a little bit. Hey, good morning, everybody. Lean, lean into the mic, brother. All right. I'll get it closer to me. There. Ah, fuck. There we go. <laughs> this is going to be uncomfortable. Anyways, I would. Uh, Emmanuel, Manny. Everybody knows me as Manny. Uh, Mata's fine. And uh, I know it's going to be hateful for everybody, but I was born and raised in L.A., Oh boy. I love that place and uh fuck you all. I'm just fucking around. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, I'm a city boy through and through and uh uh born and raised. Everybody says what part of LA, but uh <laughs> LA LA. I was born in like the um, LA area. Grew up in Hollywood. Then moved up to like North Hollywood and uh currently live like in a uh, Burbank area. So if anybody's out there, hit me up. Yeah. Hey, so do I remember you telling me that that big North Hollywood shootout happened just a few oh, blocks yeah, yeah, from your yeah. house? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And were you, were you so this is, you were around it. at the time. I can yeah. hear it. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that happened, I think it was uh, 96, 97. Somewhere in there. Somewhere yeah. there. Yeah, and um, I lived, um, I would say, a quarter mile away from there. And um, one day we just started hearing pop, you know, the you know the crackles and the pops of fucking... Uh, gunfire going off and uh started watching the news 
and all that shit unfolded like about, you know, a few blocks away. My friend actually lived two houses behind that bank. So I was kind of worried about them back then. We didn't have cell phones and bullshit like that. So I kind of made my, myself to his house trying to figure out if he was doing all right or whatever. But, um, yeah, a lot of fucking tactics fucking changed that LAPD because of that fucking shootout. Yeah. Yeah. When you know what else is funny is. In 1996, that was a big deal. Now, some crazy nuthead shooting it out with the cops in the downtown Seattle or L.A. or whatever. It's kind of like, eh, it's Tuesday. Yeah, but he had tons of body armor. Yeah, that's like, true. Like, it was nuts. Oh, this is for my... Uh, it was my, two of them, right? My, my, two my, guys. My Marine friends there, yeah. They were fucking... Two Marines, I think it was. Uh, and, like, they always say, there's nothing fucking stronger than a Marine and his fucking rifle. Yep. They fucking went at it. Yeah. 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 yeah, you but know the cop. The cops had to break into a sporting goods yeah. store and get yeah. some like high powered deer rifles to finally put them yeah. down. Right, that, yeah. that that whole term being out uh, outgunned came in fucking big in that fucking scenario. There. Yeah, you yeah. know the mom sued uh, the city uh, and won a lot of money because th- they said they didn't apply aid right away once they were shot Jesus. and killed. Yeah, and so I think it went to court and she got a lot of money out of this LAPD or the city. Yeah. For two guys that robbed a bank and shot up everything. Damn. Yeah. Um, all right. So after 2nd Ranger Battalion, we kind of lost track of each other a little bit because yeah. this is before internet was ubiquitous and there was no MySpace or Facebook or I guess maybe. times. Yeah. Yeah. So where, where did you go after the Ranger Battalion? You went to another infantry unit, correct? Yes. I went to 1st uh, of the 1st uh, Battalion. 23rd Infantry, which is right down the road from there. Was that, is that 25th Division? No, that's uh, 2nd ID. 2nd ID, okay. And so the big uh, Indian patch? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay, and that, was that the Striker Brigade that, at that it, time? We were the first Striker Brigade that fucking went off into Iraq and had all that fun down there with them. Okay, so were you, were you involved in sort of the rollout of the Striker vehicle and the early testing and implementation? Yes, exactly, yeah. We When I was getting there after... After Ranger Battalion, I left in uh, 02, beginning of 02, like around uh, January, February. I got there, and then um, they were actually transitioning over from the, and I just fucked uh, up. Was it the Bradley? The Bradley, thank you. They were transitioning from the Bradleys to the Strikers. So they were turning in all the Bradleys and grabbing all the Strikers. I never actually saw the Bradleys going out. Okay. But um, they had... Uh, GM or General Mortars had just fucking brought over the new strikers and shit. And uh, they were like, for back then, because I just saw the, the strikers that they use now, they're fucking awesome. But um, the ones that we got back then, they were pretty fucking cool for our, our age. And, uh, you know, you can show where the striker was on a map and you get the live feed of where they're all moving around and stuff like that. Um, you had a 50 cal or a Mark 19 mounted on it and you can control it from down in the gunner station. You know, move it with a thumb and blah blah blah, and little joystick and an yeah, infrared TV exactly. screen. Exactly. Yep. Did it have a heavier weapon than a than a fifty cal and Mark nineteen? Could you put like a thirty millimeter, like the Bradley? Yes, we had. Um, fuck. Or maybe the Bradley was twenty millimeter. I don't know. When it comes to like military nomenclature and bullshit yeah. like that, believe me, I've way past that. And yeah. I've fucking okay. forgotten everything. But we did have like the regular infantry units had a fifty cal or a Mark nineteen, and then uh, we had a little bit of heavier guns. On different ones, and they couldn't go too heavy because uh, I remember they they tested some out, and it was like dumping the the the, the striker would flip over after it was oh, being shit. shot. Like, if you, like <laughs> shoot it so they they had to adjust. We, we found a design flaw. <laughs> <laughs> but um, for them, yeah, there was a heavier weapon on one of them. Forgive me, I don't yeah. know exactly okay. which one it is, but yeah, um, those were for like uh, heavier targets and things like that. Yeah. Okay. Did you? So did you guys deploy to Iraq for the invasion up through the desert, or is that strictly 3rd ID? That was 3rd uh, ID. We went, the first time I was in country was uh, November 2003. Okay, so right after the invasion. Yes. And how many deployments did you do? Just one huge one. one uh, yeah. Was it like 14 months or something? Uh, no, it was, uh, yeah, 12 months. 12 months? Okay. Did they actually got you home on your scheduled, like, return date? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No yeah, shit? Yeah. Okay. Back then, they didn't stop uh, stop lossing people or keeping people in the country until I got out. Okay. Uh, and, um, well, just to, like, give you, like, I went in 99, 
and I got out in uh, 05, 06 and shit. So. Okay. Because what, what I remember, like, being over there as a contractor, and I would talk to, whether it was National Guard or yeah. Active Army, and I'd be like, man, how long are you guys here for? And they're like, well, we're here on a 12-month deployment, but we're 14 months in, and we don't have a redeployment date back to the States. It's just like, dude... That is such a fucking mind fuck and a, a, really a leadership failure at the oh, yeah. highest levels to yeah. do that to people. 12 months is already brutal. 90 days was not fun. I can't imagine a year straight. And then on top of that to be like, well, we don't actually know when we're going to send you home. Just destroy morale. I think um, they started doing 18 month uh, deployments. Holy after shit. After me. Yeah. Why, why were they holding people longer? Just because it was cheaper to keep people there than to, like, fucking rotate them. Like, to train and I, I mean, and basic bring. answer. I, I'm pretty sure they have a more, you know. I, I think it was also there There was some, like, pretty serious incompetence at, you know, like, strategic levels. Huh. And, yeah, yeah, right? <laughs> <laughs> and um, under undermanned for the missions they were trying to, to carry out. And so every time they looked at redeploying people home it was like wait a minute we don't have if we do that we don't have the manpower so they kept you know these surges and manpower plus ups and it just got to where they couldn't support everything they were trying to do so these these poor soldiers just get stuck there on these deployments with no real return date so it was more leadership because i mean after 9 11 wasn't there a big surge of enlist like people enlisting into the military so what it wasn't a a manpower problem it was like logistics of yeah. getting people trained and over there I, that, yeah. that's yeah. makes sense i mean i don't know obviously i wasn't in the planning meetings but like from the outside looking in my impression is they just couldn't figure out how to staff their mission okay i think and now that i worked at like the hospital and i told you guys earlier about being a director and anything um when you look at it logistically the it's always it always ends up being about the dollar amount well yeah and just transferring people that quickly, um, it, it just costs more money. Yeah. If you could keep them out there for 18 months and then you get the next fuckers out there for another 18 months, you know, there's less money Cut being out spent. One whole, that makes yeah. sense. One whole yeah. group of people at that point. And, and, and you know, you Great. guys talk about it all the time. It's always about the fucking money. Yeah. I, yeah. Time is money. Fucking yep. everything's money. Yeah. So. Yep. And, and especially enlisted soldiers are nothing but disposable assets oh, to, yeah. to politicians and, and you know, flag and, level officers. And it's not just soldiers. It's fucking work yeah. labor. Yes. 100%. Every yep. fucking blue collar labor. I, oh, yeah. Fuck. Yeah. Um, okay. So before we, before we get distracted, <laughs> I, I do want, I want to hear about this Iraq deployment. So, and I vividly remember stepping off the aircraft on my first deployment into Afghanistan. So tell us a little bit about just flying, like, de- like leaving Fort Lewis, deploying to Iraq and arriving in country. Um, so it was, uh, and sorry, I'm going to interrupt for how long before you deployed, did you know you were deploying? I want to say, um, six months or so. Okay. So you had pr- plenty yeah, of heads up. We had plenty of time Like a big training cycle going in. Yes, yes, yes. We Over had uh, the whole Yakistan NTC, or where did you guys go? NTC, Yakistan. Oh, okay. Okay. And, um, once again, I We're talking forget. about, uh, Yakima, Yakima. training. Yeah, 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 yeah. I like <laughs> Yakistan though. And then, um, down in, uh, I know NTC is in California, but there's another training center down Fort in Polk, the, Louisiana. Yeah, yeah. Is that JRTC? JRTC, yeah, yep. I think. Like I said, fucking nomenclatures and all that shit. I forgot about I'm amazed I can remember all this. I, I hear you and Andy talking about this shit all the time. I don't know if you guys have it rehearsed or what the fuck. No, but no, some of it just, <laughs> I'm just like, some of it is completely lost, but some of it is right, also like that's sticks. Right. Fuck. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so you guys did a big training cycle yeah. leading up to it. All these um, different deployments that we did before getting up there. So, um, it was fun. I mean, and then, um, come, um, come, uh, deployment time. We deployed sometime in November. Like I said, I'll explain right now, but a lot of my deployment is foggy and I'll get to it right now. Why? But, um, uh, we deployed sometime in November and, um, we were in country from November to November. So Oh three to Oh four. Okay. And, um, um, leading up to that, I still, I'll, ba- I'll backtrack a little bit. So I, I was in Ranger med- Regiment from 99 to 02, the end of 01. And um, I left for some, you know. Some bullshit. 
So I'm, I'll say it right now. You were one of the best soldiers in the fucking company. Hands down. Um, I'm not... Uh, I'll, I'll get into it a little bit. I, I love everybody there. Yeah. My fucking platoon, you guys, you guys are fucking awesome. Um, I was uh, lacking some standards, which were pull-ups. Um, I, I ain't fucking scared to say it, but... Um, but it is... Hang on. I want to point something out, though. It's like... So the different, like, two pull-ups pushes an outstanding ranger out of the unit. And it's like, hang on a minute. There needs to be some gray area where we can address this. And But, but let me get into it a little bit. So okay. the pull-ups, I, I fucking got them. And yeah. I was good. And then I went to a pre-ranger, and I, it's in Washington. I mean, in Georgia. And I went down there, and uh, I did the PT test. And uh, push-ups for me were, like, fucking whatever. Yeah. I mean, I can max it out. And, and this big it, motherfucker can run. You guys wouldn't know it by looking at him, but let me tell you, <laughs> this fucking dude can fly. I'm not as fast as fucking folk back then. <laughs> <laughs> but I could run back then, I guess. I, yeah. But um, push-up was the one that fucking got me. And uh, it was some dick instructor fucking making me push, and he was in fucking, he's all zero. like one. Zero. Zero. No. Zero. No. Oh, no. Oh, shit. No. Three. Four. And so yeah. on and so on. Yep. And so I kind of, I got up and I had failed it. It's only like fucking 45 or 50. It's not many. It's, yeah. It's, it's, it's ridiculously, ridiculously, whatever. It's slow. And I was all, I got up and I was just like, how the fuck did I just fail push-ups? <laughs> and um, he blurted out something as I was walking away. And uh, I was all like, what the fuck did he just say? And... Um, once again, I'm not trying to fucking put any dirt on anybody. He said, uh, one less spick. And I was like, what the fuck? Oh, shit. And I kind of got me going in my head. And um, I was like, what the fuck happened? And um, I just went back in line, finished up the fucking PFT, because you still have to continue doing it. Yeah. Pulled ups, I passed. I passed. Run, yeah. I passed. Whatever. And then uh, I can't, I'll, I'll never forget this guy. Sarn Brown fucking gets all the PT failures in the fucking formation. And he's all like, Mata, you fucking failed the PT test? And I'm all like, I kind of like, I, I, yes, sorry. And he's all like, come here. Come in my office. Yeah. And uh, took me in his office. Is this Jiu-Jitsu Sergeant Brown? Super yeah. cool. Yeah. 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 Yep. Awesome fucker. And um, he takes me in his office. He's all like, what did you fail? And I'm all like, push-ups, sorry. And he's all like, drop down and give me some fucking push-ups. And I fucking. Blast like, out like bla 50. Yeah. Blast out out. Like, he's all like, oh, you're fucking good to go. And I'm like, I kind of shrugged my shoulders. And like, eh. he, he calls back to the fucking to second ranger battalion. They're like, no, 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 no. Send this fucker back. Really? So I come back and uh, all this shit was running through my head. And I was young. Yeah. And I was just like, you know what? Uh, and let me preface this by saying that I'm not the BLM bullshitter or anything yeah. like that. I take care of my own problems. I'm brown. If you guys haven't fucking been able to tell i got a little mexican americans don't like to get up early <laughs> but they have to <laughs> so they do it very slowly <laughs> <laughs> i'm all about the fucking racial jokes and stuff like that yeah and I, I i'll fucking throw them back at people i don't care yeah um i take it with a grain of salt i'm i'm cool with that shit but um that one fucking really got me mm -hmm. and um I that's was not a joke no it's not a joke yeah. at all what it's not in good fun right Right. Yeah. And um, I was all like, no, I wasn't going to fucking tell anybody. So I came back and I told our team leader, you know who it was. Um, yep. And I'm all like, I'm done. They're all like, what do you mean? We'll send you right back. I'm like, I'm fucking done. Uh, I didn't tell them what the reason was. Yeah. I, they, you know, it, it'd be whatever. I, I, I don't want to be a part of this. And it was just my head. Yeah. I loved my platoon. We had deployed to fucking Korea, Jordan, yeah. all kinds oh, yeah. of shit. We've fucking been through some mayhem together. It was awesome, but... Um, By mayhem, you mean bar fights in Tacoma. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and Olympia and yeah. blah, blah, blah. And Seattle, yeah. <laughs> Good times. But um, I was just like, fuck it. I'm out. Yeah. And uh, went down to one, two, three. And when I got there, they're all like, hey, what, you know, they were pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, one of my fucking military fucking mentors, uh, Robinson, uh, became first sergeant fucking after 20 years. Awesome fucking dude. Um, 
he's all like, hey, what did you get fucking kicked out for? And I'm all like, uh, uh, I was all like, I was about to say PT, and I'm all like, uh, I just didn't like it there anymore because of this. And I kind of told him my story. He's all like, all right, fucker, cool. We're different here. You want to go to ranger school? And I'm like, yeah. And he's all like, all right, pack your bags. You're going. Oh, shit, that fast. That, that fucking fast. And he's all like, I went to ranger school, fucking made it straight through. And then came back at the tab. If anybody know, if you're in the military, you guys understand how fucking fun that school is. Yeah. Oh yeah. And um, so I, I was tabbed after I came back. I actually went back to Second Ranger Battalion, and I talked to the sergeant major at the time. Was it, uh, Hugh? Yes. Okay. And then um, I'm all like, hey, I left, but I, I want to be back. You know, my mistake. Blah blah blah. This and that. Did you tell him why? Um. No. Okay. I guess this is me, my coming out party right now. Yeah, I okay. really haven't told anybody. I keep it out. I've been waiting. <laughs> Fuck, yeah. <nah. laughs> um, um, even Hill was there because he was snipers. Uh, Sergeant Hill, uh, police yeah. officer now. Hill went to sniper section? Yes. Okay. Well, at least that's what they told me. I, I, I wasn't okay. in battalion. But sure. anyways. I, I don't know. It's a long and time then, ago. Um, they're all like, um, hey, Hill, you want this guy? And then Hill like, looked at me. He's all like, Fuck, yeah. Is he going to come? And I'm all like, yeah. But then Sergeant Major told me, he's all like, well, I know your unit's about to deploy. Oh, no. And I'm all like, are you just fucking trying to get out of deployment? And I'm all like, no. <laughs> it's not why you come to 2nd Ranger Battalion. And then he's all like, well, I'll take you. But I think you have a fulfillment to do over there. And I'm all like, all right, cool. I'll fucking go take care of that shit. So after that, that whole thing that I was talking about, finally fucking infilled into Iraq. Yeah. And... um Got to in country. Uh, can, I, can I interrupt? Go ahead. So what, when you guys deployed to Iraq, uh -huh. did, you, did you transport strikers with you or did you just fly the troops and strikers were waiting for you in country and you like ripped somebody there? Um, the second one. So ripped. Okay. we just went in. What uh, does that mean? Oh, sorry. Uh, replace in place. Mm -hmm. Okay. There, there was already a unit there that, that was part of the first invasion to Iraq. Okay. And then um, we came, replaced them. And just took over and their took vehicles. took over their, their vehicles. Okay. And, um, and just went on from that. Um, we grabbed the vehicles in Kuwait and then drove up to Iraq and okay. moved on from there. Um, go ahead. Just is, is, do people fuck with any of the, like the leave notes or anything on these vehicles? Like talking just shit to other people no, like I this mean, bullshit now, now I think, that i think about it, i'm surprised there wasn't like a lot exactly, of sharpie graffiti yeah, yeah, on like, the inside of those things yeah you, can't, you can't walk into a honey bucket without seeing yeah, all kinds yeah, of and i enjoy some honey bucket I figured, graffiti i really yeah. do and uh no you get to talk to like um like your counterpart that was already in so you kind of get an idea of what they fucking went through and they tell you the stupid stories and like what to do watch out for this fucking road or we were ambushed here blah 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 you know you get that whole intel as you're fucking going in so I guess there was no need for that, but um, I'm pretty sure maybe somebody found something. Yeah, how does nobody take a Sharpie and draw a uh, dick hey, on the inside? Uh, that's what I mean. Oh, fuck, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Suck on this, bitch. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And I don't remember seeing any of that, which now that I think about it, I'm kind of disappointed. Uh, uh, yeah. um, that's true. Sorry. I just, I was uh, <laughs> uh, uh, <laughs> like, I'm going to rip something. I'm going to fucking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Leave a, leave a nice little pictogram here for the next unit coming in. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, what was your unit's mission? Do you remember, like, the overarching mission? Well, we went up to Missoula. That was our... Okay. our like, I, I know that city well. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. But uh, first off, it was pretty much uh, support fucking everybody that was there. And, um, and the main mission was, I think you guys were talking about, I was hearing your latest podcast coming in, and it was basically, you know, take away the weapons of the locals and find weapons caches and... They got high value targets and blah 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 blah. What the overall umbrella mission? It doesn't work that fucking. If you think you didn't get that much information in Second Ranger Battalion, well, you get even less in a okay. in a fucking regular line infantry unit. Yeah. yeah. So I mean, you kind of said yes, yes, you know, it kind of a kind of a thing, and um, that that's basically what we did. But um, getting into we stopped by in Baghdad and then uh, moved up to this little area called Samara. Mm -hmm. um, do you know that place? Yeah. yeah. And uh, that's where um, um, Black Hawk Company 
or platoon renegades or shout out to everybody there that's listening um we went on our first mission and that's when uh one of the uh, my fucking life-changing event fucking happened oh it was on mission number one which mission number one Holy jesus we fucking okay. went out and it was fucking awesome but um just to get into that uh it was our first mission we were fucking all excited and yeah. uh i just got my saga gunner uh Blink and staff. Were you, were you an E5 at this point? Yes. Okay, so you're a team leader. Yes. Okay. I was a team leader at this time, and uh, I just got my saw gunner. Um, I had a uh, uh, couple other dudes in there, too. What's the loadout in a striker? Is it a full squad or one fire team? No, it's a full squad. Okay. So um, full squad plus driver and TC, so okay. the, what, what we call tank commander, but yeah. it's the can it, yeah. It's a striker. Tactical commander. Tactical commander. There, there you, you go. Change out the fucking terminology. Um, and for you guys listening, a squad is is nine people. Yeah. So a squad leader, two team leaders, and each of them have a saw gunner, a grenadier, and a rifleman. Yep. And two teams. So um, we roll out. Uh, it was our first mission. We prepared for this like hundreds of times. And uh, What was the mission? Do you remember? Um, take out high value target at so-and-so building. Okay. Blah blah blah. Like uh, set up set up a perimeter and then do an assault. Exactly. Okay. Yeah, yeah. And um, and this is the next thing I'm about to say is well, what the story gets to is why I'm so hazy on so much of the fucking things that. Yeah. And my long term memory is kind of fuzzy, and short term memory sometimes is kind of fuzzy. So we roll out on our first mission, and um, it was two platoons that were fucking heading out two different objectives. But as we were fucking heading out from the FOB, um, we, uh, the first platoon ran into some mechanical problems, obviously, because that, that always fucking happens on the first deployment. And then so we had to veer off and take a road that was not part of the plan. Yeah, all right. And um, we went on this road, and uh, the best way I can describe it is to one side – we, it was a high raised road, and to one side yep. there was like um, vegetation, blah blah blah, and to the yep. other side there was like this, what I call an irrigation canal, but it's a fucking shit river. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. And so for you guys listening in Iraq, a lot of these um, these canals or shit rivers, they would build like dikes on at least one side, and then the road, a lot of the roads would just be along the top of the dike. And um, if you guys know the striker, it's pretty fucking heavy. Yeah. Big. So um, we were on this road, and um, this is what I remember. Um, by the way, it was December 8th, which was two days ago, and that's why I'm here in Washington. It was our okay. fucking 20th year reunion from this event. Okay. And um, we're rolling on this uh, road, and uh, one of the striker's wheels uh, gives out on the road, and it kind of does this whole thing here and then flips upside down into the canal like the road collapse or the yeah, the, the, the road the, gave the dike collapsed the, yeah. yeah okay and um two vehicles actually went into the river holy shit yeah so it, it was pretty bad but um at the moment there was a lot of fucking confusion yeah. three three two went in no uh fucking three three went in and so on and so forth and uh but um then they figured it out it was two fucking vehicles that went in um as soon as the vehicle went into the water Fucking, uh, it was in December, and uh, water hit you and yeah, cold. Took, took your breath away. Yep. Um, so hang on. So you're in one of the vehicles that goes into the river. Are you guys right side up or upside down? Upside down. Okay. And uh, I get myself, uh, I'm standing on the ceiling of the uh, the striker, and I go to unlock the... Are you the, wearing body armor, I assume? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. So I ditch that. I have my weapon. Yep. And um, I'm trying to fucking open up the, the striker. It's not open yeah there's a lot of vegetation a lot of shit in this canal so yeah. to get it open it was fucking yeah it's stuck impossible in the mud. yeah and um um the lights are kind of flickering 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 and then they fucking go off i can feel the water coming over my fucking hips yeah and then the water coming up to my chest it's just pitch black and it's fucking pitch black and Jesus. i'm trying to fucking kick this door open yeah. trying to do everything i can <clears throat> and um the water comes over my neck. Yeah, dude. And then uh, I'm all like, all right, all right, dick face. If you're going to survive this, you got to fucking hold your breath, dude. So uh, uh, I stopped. I, I thought about Claudia. Yeah. My wife. Um, 
I thought about my family and told them I loved them. Did you have kids at this point? No. Okay. Um, I thought about my family, told them I loved them, and I yeah. closed my eyes, and I'm like, all right, fucking, you got to hold your breath. Yeah. And uh, there's a lot of fucking shit that happened throughout the whole thing, but... Yeah. Um, well, tell, tell us your experience, and we can go back and uh-huh. talk about what everybody else did. And um, I remember waking up outside. And, That's it. And... Um, I'm in somebody's lap, and I look up at them, and I'm like, holy shit, like deliverance. What happened? Yeah. And, and you could, this person's, like, looking down at me, and They're probably I looking can at hear you the voice. scared eyes, yeah. And it's fucking raspy. They're fucking almost in fucking tears and shit. Yeah. They're all like, the vehicle fl- flipped over, sorry, Mata. And I'm like, and I can hear who it was. Now I know it was Armistad, but, um, and I'm like, is everybody okay? And he's all like, they're working on, they're working on Blake's staff, aren't Oh, man. And I'm all like, is he okay? I, I don't know. Oh, he's man. He's not fucking moving. And um, he started kind of like tearing up. Yeah. And uh, I black out again. Okay. I, um, I wake up and I'm all like, once again, I asked the same question. What happened? How is everybody? Is everybody okay? And he's all like, blinking stuff. He's not fucking breathing. And then I close my eyes again. Yeah. I wake up and I'm like fucking hovering now. And I'm on the fucking stretcher. Okay. And uh, I could feel the fucking heat coming off of the fucking Black Hawk fucking hitting like, me. Because I was cold as fuck. Yeah. And that felt so good. And I was like. <laughs> were, you, were you inside the aircraft at not this yet, point? Not okay. yet. And um they're like fucking walking me to it. And I could hear Rob, same guy that I was talking to, uh, Robinson. He's all like, you're going to fucking be okay, dick. You're going to be okay. Yeah. Fucking. And he's all like, you're going to be okay, Ranger. You're going to fucking be okay. And I'm like, I couldn't fucking answer anybody. I couldn't yeah. fucking ask. Yeah. I was fucking out. And then uh, they load me up into the fucking helicopter. And I'm looking at the crew chief and shit. And I'm just like looking at him. It looks like a fucking alien to me. He has yeah, his fucking visor fat. down. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, he has his head, headphones on, and he's just, like, looking at me. And I'm, like, looking up at him. I could see the fucking green light behind him. And I'm just like, am I fucking being abducted? What the fuck's going on right now? Yeah. I, I was just fucking out of it. Yeah. And uh, I pass out again. I wake up mid-fucking ride and close my eyes again. And then I start regaining consciousness once we fucking land and they're taking me into the fucking into the medical tent yep. and that was in uh anaconda which is right in baghdad and okay. um and uh they start treating me there and i get in there and i know this is going to sound nasty as fuck but um first thing i wanted to do i wanted to take a big ass shit oh yeah and i tell the nurse and i'm like i need to i, I need to go to the restroom bad yeah and they're all like no 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 you can't fucking go to the restroom um, we'll, we'll bring you a fucking bedpan. And I'm like, oh God, I'm, I'm yeah. not fucking taking uh, uh, shit in a bedpan, dude. Yeah. And she, and, um, she's all like, uh, no, 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 no. And it was this captain. You can see her rank. They're wearing BDUs or whatever. And I'm like, no, 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 lady. We're fucking, we're going to the fucking porta potty. <laughs> she's all like, no, you're not. You're going to take it. I'm like, <clears throat> I grab my IV and I'm fucking walking outside. I go into the porta potty, take care of business. And I walk back in and I get there and I guess the, doctor, PA, whoever it was, gets their colonel this time, and he's all like, all right, we're going to fucking package you up. You're going to fucking Germany. And I'm all like, uh-uh, I'm not going to fucking Germany. I'm staying right here. I'm going back to my boys. And he's all like, no, no, no. Listen to what I'm saying. You're going to Germany. I'm all like, uh, listen to what I'm saying. Unless you want some fucking trouble, I'm staying fucking right here. Yeah. I'm going to get better, and I'm going back with my boys. And he's all like, okay, we'll talk about it again tomorrow. <laughs> And, uh, and so, um, the next day they came by and they're all like, um, Hey, I, I really think that you need to be met back to Germany. I'm like, I'm not going anywhere. They're all like, I, I had a pulmonary infection and all this other, so I was hooked up to IVs and all kinds of shit. And they were running, um, antibiotics and fluids for me and stuff like that. And, um, uh, they're all like, unless you fucking show us that you can fucking go back. And I'm all like. I can fucking drop down and give you some fucking push-ups right now. I don't give a fuck, but I ain't going anywhere. I'm going back. And he's all like, you're a tough motherfucker. And I'm all like, I don't give a fuck. I'm fucking going back to my boys. I don't know what happened. 
I heard somebody may have died. I ha- there's like oh, you don't even know at this point. Exactly. Like okay. ba- communication was. How many is this? A day later, two days, three days. How how far in the future are we talking here? Um, day, two days, three okay. days. Um, I didn't get anybody, or I didn't get word. I knew that three people had fucking passed. That okay. that that was it. Oh, but you did. They wouldn't tell you who. Like names or anything like that. Yeah. And I'm like, who was it? You know, blah blah blah. And I was getting better and. Um, Started doing a little bit of PT on my own in there, just trying to show them that I'm not fucking going anywhere. I'm going yeah. back. And then uh, then my uh, Sergeant Major and uh, our commander fucking shows up, um, battalion commander, and they're all like, Mata, I fucking heard that you didn't want to fucking go to Germany. And I'm like, no, no, Sergeant Major, I ain't fucking going anywhere. I'm going back. And he kind of looks at me, nods his head. He's all like, all right. Yeah. You're fucking staying then, dick. I'm like, all right, cool. That's what I wanted. And uh, after that, uh, um, this is like before Skype, before any of this bullshit. So mm. communication was fucking horrible. Had Claudia been notified that you were WIA? Or I, I was able to talk to her like one or two days afterwards. Okay. And uh, you know how that call went. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so I'm, I call her. I'm like, hey, hon. How you doing? <laughs> <laughs> First of all, I want to let you know I'm okay. I'm fine. <laughs> Yeah. Nothing wrong. Yeah. But I was in a little accident. Uh, I'm not going back yet, and I'm going to stay here. But um, I kind of drowned, and uh, I'm okay now, and um, I'll see you when I get back. <laughs> <laughs> She's just like, dick? What the fuck? And Hang on. I just thought of something really funny. When we were, pri- this is early on in our, when we were young privates in uh, Ranger Battalion, and someone looks at Mata and goes, I think it was one of the squad leaders. They're like, hey, Mata, are you good for the swim test? And he goes, I made it to America. (laughs) 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 And I was fucking dying. (sighs) So that goes back to the whole... I don't give a fuck about race, but yeah. there, you know, there's some people jab you a little bit. Yeah. And it yes. feels no, no, no. It's a little when they mean it, right? Yeah. You know, when someone means it in a joking way, like, Hey, we're friends and I love you and I'm going to poke fun at you. Oh yeah. But then there's that like, no, he meant it. Oh yes. Yes, 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 yes. Um, so where was I, uh, talking to Claudia, talking to Claudia. Yeah. Yeah. And then, um, coming back. So back then there was communication was fucking horrible. Um, cell phones had just been invented, I believe like, Two years ago, like the yeah, the Nokia yeah. ones, yeah, the snakes, yeah, the, the snakes yeah. And yeah, exactly, <laughs> yeah, and nobody thought to carry it in their pocket. It was no. like you got a cell phone and you put it in your cupboard, mm-hmm. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and you'd make your phone calls when you got home from your cell phone that was in your cupboard. <laughs> so I got better, and I don't know, I don't remember time frame or anything like that. Yeah, uh, little Rob, and I'll tell you about him later. But um, he kind of told me when I got back to the platoon. And that was... Uh, so you didn't find out who had been lost until you got back to the platoon. Exactly. Okay. Do you want to say their names? I don't mind saying it. Um, yeah, let, just so people so can know their names. Everybody knows that folk carries his little KIA bracelet and stuff like that. I got one also. I, I made it into white gold hmm. because I always fucking look at it and I'm all like, I should have been the fourth motherfucker on this bracelet. Yeah. And... Uh, I really have a lot of respect for these fuckers here. Yeah. And um, so my saw gunner was a specialist blinking staff. And uh, 3-3 was just a squad leader. He's a uh, staff sergeant bridges. And uh, their driver was a uh, specialist with Wesley. Okay. And um, those fuckers, um, we had a big old reunion a couple, uh, a couple days ago, which was on the 8th, uh, 20 years from the accident I just told you. And... Uh, a lot of those guys I hadn't seen. Obviously, we kept in touch, but we haven't seen in a while. It's just like folk. Yeah. And it's like uh, we haven't fucking skipped a day, man. And yeah. we're, we're making fun of each other. We're yep. fucking poking at each other. It's a sad event, but... Uh, Still brings all the boys back together. Yeah. 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 And um, I guess that's how we cope, just making fun of each other. And uh, that, That's a good thing about being dudes is you can legitimately not see each other for 10 years. <laughs> and then you run it like... I, same thing. I flew down to Florida... Was it last spring? And did a uh, regimental reunion thing. And oh, Hash yeah, yeah. was there and, and Augustine and uh, uh, oh, Dave was down there. And it's like, no time is lost. Fucking like, Dave. Yeah. You, you, ha- you haven't seen each other in, yeah, you haven't seen each other in 10 years. And it's like, what's new, man? 
No, no, nothing. nothing. Yeah. Working, and then, uh, and then uh, immediately we just start making fun of hash. <laughs> 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 and that's how the whole weekend goes. Um, uh, so, um, I'm, I'm able to fucking, so I don't know what they call it, but I, I checked out of the fucking hospital, right? Yeah. And I got no gun on me. I got nothing on me. And I'm all like. Um, and your unit, you're in Baghdad and your unit's up north somewhere at this point? Samara. Okay. Or right outside of Samara. And I'm just like, well, how the fuck am I going to get there? And they're all like, well, uh, uh, so I wasn't getting any answer from the fucking medical people. And I'm oh. like, you know what? Stop. I'll fucking get there. And uh, I went outside. I started looking for fuckers. I'm like, who's heading up to fucking this area here? Yeah. And they're all like, um, oh, we're going to fucking go up here. We can drop you off here. And they're flying or driving? Driving. Okay. And uh, they're all like, well, where's your gun? And I'm all like, it's in a river. In a river somewhere? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> they're all like, somebody gave me a fucking M9 while I was traveling with them. And I'm Holy like, shit. I was all like, fuck it. Let's go. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> this is some Dumbo drop <laughs> shit. <Yeah. laughs> Road so, trip. A- after a few stops, I finally made it up to my platoon. I walk in, and they're in fucking chow at the chow hall. And I'm all like, hey, fuckers, how you guys doing? <laughs> and uh, literally, like, there's a couple guys that fucking come over and fucking hug me. And, yeah. you know, they're fucking crying. And yeah. this is the first time. And, you know, then I start. Is this, is this how many days post-accident is this? So, fuck, my math is off. But uh, roughly. 19. Okay, so it's been a bit. Yeah. Okay. Because it was December 8th when the accident happened and December 27th when I finally linked up. Okay. So one of the guys wrote it down in a journal, and I didn't find out exactly what day it was until yeah, uh, a couple days ago that I had linked up back with him on December 27th. Okay. So um, thank you, little Rob. Um, uh, I get there, and um, we're fucking back in the – we're back in action after that and okay. um, do a couple missions off of there in Samara. And um, because, and I'm not trying to toot my own horn here, but because, you know, and this is probably Ranger Patan's fucking main mission. Ranger's fucking main, main, main mission is to train fuckers up so that they could get all these fucking tactics, gain all this knowledge, and go out into the regular fucking line units and be able to disseminate yeah. that information, being able to fucking train those guys that's up. That's the charter, right? That, that's, yeah. that's the main mission off of a, what a ranger is, right? And um, we just uh, fucking started hitting everything. And uh, back then, our ROI or, you know, we weren't fucking, our hands weren't fucking tied. So. Yes, early on in the war, it was the Wild West, and you, we, we had some fun. Oh, fuck yeah. <laughs> and um, because I knew about demo fucking blew up some shit and they're all like Mata that's too much and I'm like fuck no man. there's no such thing and first Iron Swift actually Bat Boy also yeah my first Iron at the time first Iron Swift uh, awesome fucker he had a and I know you make fun of this all the time and I love it but I have a little voice and everybody fucking <laughs> looks at me and uh, they're all like oh fuck because I'm probably one of the biggest fucking Mexicans you've ever seen the, you, know, you and Alex Signs. yeah oh Signs. yeah yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> and uh but once you hear me talking, they're like, what the fuck? Yeah. Or like, um, I'll talk to people on the phone, and they're all like, oh, yeah. And they're all like, holy shit. You're, yeah, I'm, yeah, I always get that. <laughs> it doesn't match. It doesn't match. <laughs> I get the same thing. <laughs> but um, anyways, um, I lost track of what I was saying. But um, making charges, fucking doing all kinds of shit, hitting up everything. From there, we get ready to move, and we uh, go up through Fallujah, then finally go up to uh, Missoula. Okay. And then we spend like uh, eight months, nine months up in Missoula. Okay, so before we get into that, did your heart stop in in the river? Did you die and get revived, or did you pass out? And they let's let's go back to how you got out of the striker. Okay, so and did your heart stop? <laughs> I don't know. You don't know. Okay. Um, I was fucking chest compressions were done on me. Okay, I was fucking given CPR. I, I tell Rob that he's the only man I've ever kissed, uh, <laughs> but then he let me in that there was it was it was him. And Mul- multiple people did CPR. Oh, fuck, they yeah. ran a train. So, <laughs> so they ran a train on my ass. <laughs> <laughs> and I was all like, "Oh fuck!" And then here I am. I'm like, "I'm not that gay. Only one guy." And then, oh, fuck, uh, I'm kind of gay. <laughs> but uh, no, I love those fuckers. Yeah, and uh, so. Um, Okay, so how how did they get you out? Let's so, go back to that. So 
Dorsey is um, we they don't have we don't have the same standards in in the line companies as in Ranger Regiment. So swimming is not fucking one of those uh, things that you. Yeah, have there's to no do. swim test in the there's regular. There's no swim army. test. Yeah. Okay. So um, and throwing race into it, um, a black guy named Dorsey, mm-hmm. stronger than fuck. I think he's. What does what does that apply? Because black people can't swim. <laughs> Oh, hey, whoa! <laughs> My, this is the first I've heard of this. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> no, but what I'm trying to say is, so he can swim, right? Okay. And but he's mm. by far the strongest motherfucker in the platoon. Yeah. And he is. He look. He's about your size right now. Oh, are you, but you're like saying fucking I'm just, oh, but, but like ripped strong. Up, oh, ripped up. Yeah. Oh, okay. Fuck. Sorry. And he doesn't even have fucking to do PT for fucking to look this. One way. of those guys, like yeah. Casey Castro, motherfucker. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. I'm eating McDonald's and I can do one arm pull ups. Yeah. Yep. He used to go out there and do like one single arm push ups and fucking one arm pull ups and yeah. I hate those do guys. like flag pulls and fucking this and that. And I'm just like, the fuck, dude. Yeah. Okay. So he jumps in like nobody fucking tells him anything. He, you know, out of his own accord, he jumps in. Fucking sinks all the way to the bottom. Do you know how deep the water was? Over his head, and so okay. I'm guessing. Did, did he did he jump in in body armor and let it like take him to the bottom, or did he no? Strip no, his I think I think everybody stripped their gear okay. trying to get in there. Um, so he sank I, to the I, bottom because I wouldn't Anthony. know because w- he's strong, strong, strong. Okay. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> he gets in there, We're and then a couple hell. other guys go in there. He's like walking in the bottom of the canal trying to get to the fucking striker, yeah. not swimming. And he gets to it, and he's fucking uh, pulling on his fucking door, and a couple of my other guys get there, and they fucking finally get it open. From my understanding... Were they, sorry, one more question. Were they able to open their eyes down there and see, or were they just feeling their way along the bottom? You, I, you may not know. I don't know. I'm pretty sure they were just feeling their way. Okay. Like, uh, I never saw the body of water afterwards. Yeah. Okay. I think you were talking about your last episode about um, trying to go back to the... Uh, trying to go back to Missoula, like you know how you were talking about. Oh, yeah. Colonel Puckett. It, it'll never happen. Yeah, yeah. I don't think it will. Um, I would love to. In my I, opinion, I would love to go. Just I want to see the fucking. I would love to go back to Mosul and just kind of tool around, but I don't see that ever. No. What did it smell like? Feasible. Shit. It's just like nasty, like. Have the, you ever been anywhere in the Middle East? No. No. Okay, so I just got back. Well, not just got back. Like a year ago, I went to uh, Egypt with my wife. Go see the sightseeing, the pyramids and the Sphinx and all that bullshit. And uh, <laughs> it's a lot like, uh, Egypt is a lot like Iraq. It smells like diesel and human shit. Yeah. And, um, and I point over and I'm like, hun, look, you see that canal right there or that fucking irrigation ditch? That's what I drowned in. And she like fucking looks at me and she's all like, I get it now. Yeah. It's just, fuck. I, I don't even know how to yeah. fucking explain it. It's, it's dry, dusty brown everywhere you look and then there are these little ditches full of water and feces and urine and 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 people bathe off of them yeah use exactly. that water. drinking water yeah. shitting water it's, it's all one water's water water is yeah. water and then um there's and it over, smells o- bad. O- overgrowth in it like fucking and that yeah, big that, big like cattails yeah, yeah. growing up out of it so it's probably in most places it's very rare that it's as deep as deep enough for you to go under and be a six foot person and be under the water um and yeah, there's always reeds and cattails growing in a lot of spots, and it always smells like shit. Like you know, you're getting close to the river or canal when you start smelling shit. Mm. So okay. the striker is about what 12, 13, 14 feet uh, height. Is it that tall? It's pretty fucking tall. Okay. Yeah, I know they're over your head. Yeah, so yeah. I would say about ten, twelve, something like that. Okay, and it was completely so under. It, it or was the wheels? upside oh. down, and the belly of it. Was, was just out. Just out, so okay. you could see the wheels and stuff. Like okay, that. so these guys are on the bottom of the river making their way to you. They get to the door. They open it up, finally. And uh, I learned about this. I was there floating. I was the first one there that they saw. They grabbed me. They throw me on top, on the belly of the striker. Yeah. And uh, a couple guys, uh, Rob starts compressions on me and fucking yeah. giving me CPR. And um, he was telling me he got fucking tired. And, you know, it, it, you know, they started rotating and running a train on me. Um, I'm going to say that if, if they had to do enough compressions on you that they were rotating people, you coded. I don't know how long I was out. Some people say yeah. three minutes. Some people will say four minutes. Some people yeah. say five minutes. I don't know. I had a weird ass dream while I was out. Uh, we can talk about that later. Oh, I would love to hear this. It, um, gives me, uh, the whole, what's his name? Um, your 
guy's his friend. Uh, the guy with the little school. Um, just black Tyler Stanaway. Tyler, oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Gives me his vibes right there. Yeah. And um, um, just that dream was fucking, it was out there. And uh, not many people know the dream that I had, but it, it, it was out there. But anyway, so they're working on me, and um, they pull out Blick also, and they're working on him. Eventually, I guess I wake up, but I was fucking out of control, telling them I couldn't breathe, and uh, I was just fucking fucking everybody up. Yeah. And so they zip tie me onto the fucking stretcher. <laughs> <laughs> they're all like, they, they couldn't control yeah, me. No, and I'm I, like, I, I fuck it. I, I fought with you. I know what that's like. <laughs> and um, they're all like, dick. And then my platoon sergeant, sergeant Matt comes over, Sergeant McLean. He's all like, you guys fucking got Mata fucking tied up? Fucking release him. <laughs> and uh, so they released me. So I punched my start, uh, <laughs> start in the face. He's all like, zip time back up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I found out all this like two days ago. So, um, so I'm, la I'm laughing about it. And uh, they finally, I was able to calm down. And they were telling me that I wasn't in the water anymore. Fucking, I'm not drowning. Can't you hear yourself talking? You're fucking breathing, dick. Um, they, they moved me over to the fucking to the side, and that's when I kind of woke up, and I was in Armistead's fucking lap. Fucking okay. And you guys kind of know the story from there. Yeah, yeah. Damn. That's fucking wild, bro. So it took three guys to open up that door, huh? Yeah. Yeah. Damn. Big motherfuckers, too. Yeah. And so, well, and just the fact that they're going to be underwater, running out of oxygen, and probably putting all of their, you know, legs, hips, and back into that thing. It's, I'm assuming, stuck in the mud. And just dragging that door through the I, mud. I think the biggest thing was the overgrowth that we were talking about, the cattails yeah. and the fucking shit like that. Yeah. And that plays a part in my dream also. So. Really? And uh, I, it just, it's just weird shit. Do you want to share that dream, or is that something you keep close? Um, I just, people have tried to, like, say, oh, this is what that means. Oh, uh, yeah. uh, okay. And I'm yeah. just like. Keep, uh, keep it to yourself uh, for now. Then. Um, did you break any ribs getting all those, that train ran on you of chest compression? I don't think so. No? I don't, don't. Were you sore in the hospital? I was fucking... All parts everything, of, everything, everything, everything hurt. Everything, yeah. everything yeah. hurt. Yeah. And, like, me trying to do fucking push-ups and everything, like, I was trying to show them, like I told oh. you. Oh, yeah. That fucking hurt like a motherfucker. <laughs> but I'm all like, I'm not fucking going to Germany. I'm yeah. fucking... So, mm -hmm. yeah. Fuck those guys. Yeah. Okay. All right. So, you rejoin your platoon. Mm -hmm. You guys are headed up. You went out to Fallujah first? Yeah, we... we we hit a couple cities going up because it's it's a long drive. Do you, so you swung west, and then you must have gone up. Did you go through Talifar on your way to Mosul? Yes. Straight up north. Okay, So and for people who don't know, after the big battles in Fallujah with the Marine Corps and the uh, AQI insurgents, most of the insurgents who escaped all escaped north to Talifar, which is due west of Mosul, which is one of the rat lines in and out of Syria where they were getting resupplied and then R&R'd, mm -hmm. rest and recuperation. And then from there, they went east into Mosul, and that's that's when Mosul got really hot in like oh five oh six, is because it was all that outflow of of uh, fighters escaping Fallujah and uh, Ramadi. Uh, yeah, <clears throat> when when you left and started on your road trip back to your boys, was it just one group of people that took you up, or were you like no, hitchhiking I your I way? No, I changed. Uh, I changed. I, I went through like three different elements going up there. No shit. <laughs> it's just. And, did you and it have, reminds did you, me also of the, what you guys were talking about when uh, um, 101st and 82nd had landed, and they're all like, fucking link up with a couple people and just fucking move and link up with a couple more people and yeah. move. Yeah. yeah. It, it, it kind of reminds me. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like yeah, yeah, D-Day. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, so obviously your body armor was probably left in the vehicle down in the bottom of the ditch. Did you find, like, a vest and a helmet to travel north, or were you just wandering No, I was 100% naked. Yeah, awesome. Yeah. Just yeah. what I had on. <laughs> Sexy. <laughs> yeah. Um, no, the, I just had the uniform I had. No shit. Yeah. Just a single yeah, pair the, of ACUs. I was able to wash it there. Was it ACUs or deserts back then? Uh, we had a, because we were the new striker brigade, we had a whole fucking different design. Oh. Uh, it was a desert camel. Yeah. But, um, it was kind of like, um, uh, you know, shoulder pockets and fucking pockets here okay. with uh Velcro and shit like that. It wasn't like your BDUs. It was just a, a little was, bit more advanced of uh, that bullshit. But. It was before all that digital bullshit, though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah okay. Yeah. Um, yeah, so you have no equipment. That's freaking wild that they would even Somebody let you out onto the... Somebody an M9, though. 
No. Yes. Well, as I was traveling. So <laughs> yeah, just a- usually, usually um, gunners and um, like uh, two forty gunner uh, yeah. Bravo and blah blah blah. They usually have a sidearm, which is uh, a nine mil. At the uh, Beretta, fucking the worst fucking gun ever. That's what he told me. Uh, those they're <laughs> garbage. <laughs> Beretta like, M9 is a piece a, of shit. I, I think I might want a Beretta until it was like, fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Here's a rock. Yeah, side uh, side, about a side story. Um, blessing. Fucking awesome fucking dude. Um, I don't know how he passed, but I know he was IED, fucking. IED. Yeah. Oh, okay. Um, he was the one that fucking taught me how to fucking shoot a uh, 9mm. Was it? Beretta, yeah. Yeah. And uh, awesome fucking dude. Yes, he was. Yeah. Um, Insane clown posse, I know. <laughs> this dude, hang on. <laughs> Let me let's talk about Jay Blessing for a minute. <laughs> May he rest in peace because he Fuck was yeah. an awesome motherfucker. He was. And this guy went to Ranger School, fell down, broke his ribs, and punctured a lung. Jeez. And then continued, finished Ranger School with a collapsed lung because he didn't want to say anything. So he did half of Ranger School on one lung. And then when he got back to the unit, they found out that his lung was collapsed. And part of it had become infected, so they cut out half of one of his lungs. And then they, they had to put him on to sort of like restricted duty or whatever. So he became uh, our armorer and learned like fixing and, and maintaining all the heavy weapons. But he would go over to the weight room with a... Uh, do you guys remember the little bottles of Mickey's, the little tiny like eight ounce Mickey's oh, yeah. grenades? He would go to the weight room with a flat of Mickey's grenades, <laughs> and he'd be over there, yeah, listening to like insane clown posse and Slayer <laughs> with his fucking Mickey's grenades, just fucking <laughs> jacking steel around. It's like, dude, what the fuck is? Going oh, on? I love this Were you guy. there when uh, he used to fucking smoke us in the fucking hallway? Being uh, that's man. one thing we skipped over on, and I think it was fucking awesome being a Ranger Private in the regiment in those times. Yeah, I don't know how it is now. I feel they're no a little bit fucking different now. They're a little bit more inclusive. Uh, but um, back then, do you remember he oh, yeah. used to fucking toss bottles at us in the fucking... Space Invaders. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we used to have to do... F- <laughs> we were getting smoked in, like, PTs and shit like that. All we had, like, a, was a garbage can lid fucking yep. to protect us. Yep. And he'd fucking be <laughs> drinking on the other side of they the throw hall. they throw their empties. Fucking yeah. And fucking fling fucking bottles you a, at us. You got us. a garbage can lid <laughs> shield. <laughs> That's oh, awesome. Oh, man. Um, but there's a theme there. Fucking blessing. Um... We're we're too we're too stubborn to fucking quit even when we're hurt. Yeah. All fucking rangers, so Yeah. Yeah. No, it's it's you have it's the one common factor is a high tolerance for pain. Um but I don't want to digress too much. So when you when you rejoin your unit now, because it's it's hard for a big army to source equipment. It's not like, hey, we've just got extra rifles laying around and whatnot did was it pretty quick to get you re-outfitted or was it like oh yeah yeah yeah. it was, was pretty it? quick okay. it was pretty quick um i mean i probably took some pogues fucking yeah weapon and some staff clerk yeah yeah okay. and said uh, this shit's mine and um they were able to recover my weapon and oh, I, I salvaged whatever i could off of it and yeah. uh, um body armor and stuff like that um but uh for the most part, yeah, I was I was fucking. Ready so, to go. is there any night vision in this canal somewhere? And do you have coordinates? Can we go? Uh, <laughs> I'm can we, sure. Can we go score a pair of PVS 14s? Uh, or a so one, this was fucked up, and um, I don't know how much the public knows about this, but uh, Wesley, from my understanding, like I said, I'm fucking hazy. He was. He wasn't able to be recovered till the next day till they were able to bring it in a... Drag the vehicle out? With a large crane, yeah. Yeah. So recovering a lot of the crap out of there was difficult. Yeah. Yeah, I'm sure. I I wasn't part of the recovery fucking yeah. unit, but I'm sure... Bro, and Andy and I seesawed a few downed aircraft, and we didn't even know the, the crew members, and that was difficult, right? Um. Yeah, I can't imagine having to, like... The following day, go back, remove the vehicle, and then recover your friend's remains out of it. That's awful. Yeah. So getting back, and uh, these are stories that they were telling me a couple days ago, too, that, you know, me coming back actually gave a little bit of motivation to everybody that, you know, Uh, the fucker that, you know. He made it. Yeah. He made it, yeah. At least, you know, one of those fuckers came out, and he's still fucking with us. Yeah. So it, it it was a little difficult getting back. But, um... 
but it is what it is, and uh, I honor those fuckers every fucking day. I love them to death. Uh, Blinken staff was, um, and going back to that whole fucking what the main mission of a ranger is. He was a shitbag, mm. and you understand what I mean by that. Um, he was a shitbag, and they're all like, "Give him tomato, he'll fucking straighten him out." Yeah. And he was given to me about two months out of deployment, and I'm like, "What the fuck? Come on, guys!" But um, not only not no because of what we were raised in battalion. Yeah, I smoked the shit out of him and did that kind of stuff, but I brought him in close. You're also I, a strong leader. That, and sometimes that's what a kid like that yeah. needs. Yeah, I brought him in close and fucking started talking to him, found out what the problems were, why he was fucking like this. Yeah. And um, right before going into fucking Iraq, or going in our first mission, sorry, um, we have a couple of cigars, and we smoked them together. And I have a picture of him and I fucking smoking a cigar. So I didn't do it on this day uh, two days ago, but for December 8th, I always fucking smoke, smoke a cigar. Smoke a cigar, yeah. And it, my kids are all like, Dad, what the fuck are you doing? That's fucking horrible yeah. for you. And I'm yeah. all like, yeah, I know. I, <laughs> I already died <laughs> once, motherfucker. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> my lungs are crap, so yeah. fuck it. Yeah. Man, man. Heavy shit. All right, let's 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 take a pee break here. Okay. All right, we're back. Um, so we left off after this freaking wild event. And now you're up north. You rejoin your platoon, your company in Samara, and then you guys work your way up north into Mosul. Anything memorable from those? Uh, I guess I guess you said your memory is pretty fuzzy after that, which is understandable. Anything memorable? Any operations in Mosul or in uh, Talafar or Samara that stand out to you? There was a lot. There was a lot of times. I mean, firefights almost like fucking weekly there. But um, yeah, Mosul was fucking wild. It was fucking fun. But <laughs> yeah, it, was, it was. We used to call it. We used to say Mosul is sporty. Uh, sporty. Um, and, and this is where my fucking fuzziness comes in because there was okay. like fucking. I hear the guys talking about oh August fourth and blah blah blah. Oh this date blah blah blah. Or you remember? And I'm just like, uh, I kind of fucking remember that. So you can imagine I was like a hundred percent, you know, fucking mental capacity and everything. Yeah, right. But um. For the most part, there's just like little things here and there. Yeah, I got IED'd a few fucking times. Did you? Uh, yeah, and, you know, Wrong push years. back. Yeah, no shit. Um, once when my uh, Rob, he was my squad leader, right? Um, he was out. He was on leave, so we we used to get like two weeks of leave while we were in country. Yeah, and um, he was out, and I was a uh, squad leader for the fucking uh, for our fucking for my squad, and um, I was up in the in the squad leader hatch. Uh, so strikers, they have four hatches on top. And as we're rolling, we have two in the, two guys in the back. There's the TC uh, hatch right here. He's usually buttoned down. Yeah. And then you have the squad leader fucking hatch, which is up front left, like kind of right behind the driver. Yep. And, uh, you know, you're, you're observing blah, 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 and this and that. And uh, IADs come at you like, you know. And... Um, you could only take a certain road so many times and then fucking move to another. Yep. Way. But everything's fucking rigged There's up. There's only to, so many roads. Yeah. yeah. Everything's rigged up to fucking blow. And uh, I know Andy says it all the time. When I refer to Andy, I mean Anderson, which is Greg. Just heads yeah, up. Yeah, to us, he's Andy. Uh, to us, is Andy, yeah. Um, he always says it. You know, you feel that fucking shit coming. Yeah. Like everything Hair gets quiet. Hair on your neck stands up. Yep. And, you know. It's your sick, that intuition Yeah, kicks that off. intuition. Yep. So we were all like. When, when um, Worm and Griff, who are the – Griff was uh, my Bravo team leader, who was my fellow team leader, but he was in the back. He's all like, Mata, you feel that? Uh-huh. And boom. as soon as he said that, fucking blah, bloom. Yeah. And I remember just fucking taking that concussion and fucking – Were you guys buttoned up inside at that no, point? No, no, no. You were we, up out of the we, hatch? We were up oh, out of the hatch. Man. And uh, – um, after you could see all the pepper and all the fucking big ass golf ball holes on the fucking striker. Yeah. Jeez. Uh, it was fun. But, um, have you, have you been <laughs> tested for TBI? Um, yes and no. We'll talk about that later just okay. because I'm in the middle of fucking getting yeah. Yeah, yeah, tested yeah. for all that bullshit. Okay. By the way, I'm not a hundred percent fucking disabled. I've never received like a purple heart or anything like that. 
or whatever I did it, yeah. because it was an enemy action. I wonder how many, if you think about how ubiquitous TBI is for people who served overseas, how many soldiers and veterans who don't have purple hearts should because they have scar tissue on their brain. And and then and not just that, like you were saying, like I didn't have PTSD. Once again, I listen to you guys' fucking podcast like every fucking week. So you were talking about yeah, you and three other people, <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> and, and our moms. <laughs> By the way, I'm signing up my mom next week, so you guys got Perfect. an extra one. All right. yeah. So you say you don't have PTSD, you say you don't have like TBI and all this shit, and I'm all like, fuck. I, I at the beginning I was the fucking same. I was like, I'm good. I'm good. I'm fine. I'm good to go. Yeah. And um, next mission. Not to like fucking stray away too much from it, but um. Uh, after I got out, I was fucking driving down in L.A., and you guys know L.A. traffic. No, you guys don't. But um, You guys know L.A. traffic, and everybody's trying to fucking cut you off and blah, mm-hmm. blah, blah. And when you're in Iraq, you own the fucking road. Right? Anybody yeah. cuts you off, just especially point, stick a gun especially in their when you have a fucking striker, yeah. you just run, run them over. over. And man. if you've never seen a striker run over a car, it's fucking funny. Yeah. And, I mean... It fucks them up. So um, <laughs> somebody cut me off, right? And uh, I just honked at him. And this is back in L.A. Yeah. And I was on La Brea, so this fucker's listening. Fuck you. Um, I honked at him, and he's all, fuck you. And I was all like, I'm going to run this bitch over. I'm going to go kill him. Yeah. Did he just fucking yeah. fuck you to me? Yeah. So I... um. I'm in this little Ford fucking escape, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> fucking badass, right? At that point, it's a striker. striker. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so I fucking chase him down. And I'm like, what the fuck? You said fuck you to me, dick? Yeah. And he's like, fuck you. So I fucking lose it then. I get out of my fucking car. I go over to the driver's side. And he had his, he rolls his window up. <laughs> and I, I know you guys are going to say bullshit. But I fucking grab the palm of my hand. Yeah. I fucking go through the windshield. I mean, go through this, uh, the, windsh- yeah, the, the window. Yeah. I fucking grab him by the neck, and I'm fucking pulling him out. Yeah. And I'm pulling him out, and I see my blood fucking all over me. Yeah. All over him, and I'm just like, what the fuck are you doing, dude? Yeah. And I fucking let him go. Yep. I get back in my car, and I'm like, Dick, you just fucking, you just yeah. fucked up. Yeah. What so year was this? 06. Okay. And I get back in my car and I fucking start driving away. And he starts trying to follow me, right? Oh. And I'm all like. Dude. Okay. I stop. I'm all like, if you want to fucking finish this, let's finish this. He's all, fuck you, blah, blah, blah. And he's like writing down my place. I'm all like, write all how you want. I'm not fucking moving. You want my fucking name, dick? Yeah. Come here. And he fucking takes off after that, right? Yeah. So, uh, yeah, of course he does. And then, um, so I get back in the car and I'm like, I'm shaking. Uh, I'm, yeah. uh, and I drive myself to the VA, yeah, the VA hospital. And then I get there and I'm, and they're all, I'm bleeding and shit. And they're all like, what are you doing? And I'm like, this is what I just did. Yeah. And they're all like, oh, okay. Uh, uh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> no idea. Like, oh my God. Uh, no. Um, so. I get a tetanus shot and fucking all this other crazy shit. And then I'm um, like, yeah, I need to see somebody. Yeah. I'm fucking, there's something wrong with me. Well, good for you that you figured it out that fast. I, Before you it, fucking it took strangled me, the yeah, man to death. Yeah, it took me a decade. Yeah. yeah. So I guess this is a fucking shout out to all the fucking veterans out there that, yeah. I mean, you're not fucking alone. It's, no. And it's fucking crazy. Yeah. And if you say you don't have PTSD, you're fucking in denial. Yeah. If uh, TBI for... You're in fucking denial. How many times did you fucking get a concussion in the fucking military? I've jumped out of a fucking plane. I don't remember. I was just going to say, jumping onto asphalt on airfield seizures. And never mind, I mean, breaching charges, flashbang grenades. Exactly. Um, recoil, the Carl Gustav recoilless, <laughs> mortar rounds. Do you, inco- do you, you know, incoming artillery or incoming mortar, incoming RPGs. And then even, uh, or fuck, the, the 50 Cal Barrett. The, the Mark 19, and then even um, even just being on a line when everybody's firing 5.56, five, like you're getting a small overpressure effect. But you, you multiply that times, I mean, what do you, like, I, I would imagine, 
there, there was a point where we were shooting like a thousand rounds probably a week when I was working for the agency. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, multiply the, that small overpressure 10,000 times or 100,000 times or whatever it is, and it's all additive. And then you combine that with the bigger blasts, and, yeah, it adds up. Yeah. Do you think the uh, denial of, like, PTSD might, like, come from? It comes from that attitude of, yeah. I'm well, ready for the next, well, I'm, I'm ready I'm to I'm ready go. for the next mission, and my that wasn't that bad, go. I'm and I'm yep. kind of fucking having fun. Yes. Oh, yeah, that's the whole thing that I was talking about earlier, and then blessing and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. There's nothing wrong with this. If in the military, it's a whole lot different. Folk can back me up with this. If, like, like me leaving regiment was, like, difficult for me. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah. very fucking hard. Yeah. I, I'm, like, giving up on my fucking buds. Mm-hmm. These are not just my brothers. They're more than that. I mean... Right I, now, I was devastated. Right, right now, I, I if came he back fucking calls Ranger me yeah. and he says, we need to go fucking take out this guy that fucking did this to my child, but I'll fucking go murder somebody mm-hmm. right now. Yeah. And he would do the same fucking thing. Mm-hmm. And I don't care about the reco- repercussions. Here, fucking lock me up afterwards. I don't care. Mm-hmm. If somebody touches my daughter, I'll fucking murder somebody. Yeah. And I, I know I can call on fucking my whole squad. I mean, anybody that you serve with. But if I call Folk and Andy, <clears throat> they're fucking right there. They're... They're fucking on the next flight out. Yep. I know this. Mm-hmm. It, it, it's like there's there's no no doubt that it's like um, we we have some bad knees, bad backs, whatever it is. That <laughs> we're a little slower, <laughs> <laughs> but spirit's still there. Yeah. Uh huh. But fucking yeah, a. that that would not take us take us out of the fucking fight. Yeah. Nothing yeah. is going to take you out of the fight. Yeah, but I mean, you know how people just deny the fact. It's, that it's, like it's this the is something I have. Attitude. It's next, next mission, next mission, yeah. next mission. Put it, away, put it aside. Next mission. Okay, yeah. okay. Because I was like, you know, I didn't know if it was like, you know, I don't, I don't deserve full medical because, well, I'm not that bad. And uh, you, you just learned to say, I'm I've good. seen, I've Ready seen, go. I've seen other people get it worse. Yeah. Well, th- oh, think yeah, I'm still here right thing. now. I didn't fucking die. Yeah. 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 I was close to fucking well. dying. But, but. I didn't fucking well, die, once. so I don't well, deserve yeah. that <laughs> shit. I don't deserve it. Yeah, yeah. which is I'm okay with a being crazy. At first, when I got out, I was and you know ratings and stuff like that. I was like fifteen percent. Yeah, and like all the shit that I've gone through now, you know that I think about, I'm like, I Holy should shit. be at a hundred percent. I yeah. should, but I'm still not. But yeah. um, I was at fifteen percent, and I was getting like three hundred, four hundred bucks from the VA, and I'm like, all right, cool, whatever. Yeah, uh, beer money. Yeah, but um. Then I moved up to 30%, and, you know, and I'm just like, all right, whatever. I almost feel like um, I'm taking money that I'm not supposed to. Yeah. There's in, in some ways, I do, too, because I'm at 15% as well. But then I look at what the government does with my taxes, and I don't feel bad at all. No. no. I, would, I would rather all you guys get 100% than my $40,000 a year going to fucking not fixing these roads. Yeah, trillions to Ukraine or to yeah. Israel. Mm-hmm. Like, it... Yeah, funding both sides of the Israel Hamas conflict. Wait, anyway, we're going to digress here. Um, Sorry. So I, yeah, no, 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 it's all good. I have one question: the mission profile for you guys, because the regiment worked exclusively at night, and then later when I was with the agency, we were almost exclusively daylight. Were you guys both? Were you almost exclusively daylight? What What was your uh, typical uh, um your work cycle? We worked day and night. I Did mean, you? okay. Whenever something needed to happen, it happened. Okay. And um, not to take away anything from regiment, I fucking think they're awesome. I wish I, I would never have left. But um, everybody takes their own road, and yeah. I'm happy. I wouldn't fucking change anything. I love the fuckers that I served with before while I was in my regiment and after. Um, it just... Uh, but um, the regular line infantry is exactly like regiment. Is it? I, I, and people are going to fucking talk shit about me, but um, it is. Uh, mission statement, probably the same. Okay. Except uh, we're not fucking jumping in and t- taking over airfields and stuff like that. But, uh, you know, high value, tar- high value target, um, high value people fucking taking out weapons caches, blah, blah, blah. Intel always fucking sucks, right? But, yeah. um, you know, oh, we heard this over here, so we need to go fucking take out this farmer over here. Or yep. this guy ratted out this guy because of a. It's the same shit. Yeah. Same shit, another fucking unit. Okay. So you guys redeployed 
Did you fly home out straight out of Mosul? You, they, they must have brought you back to Baghdad. Yes. We, we uh, drove all the way down to Baghdad. Wait. See, there's where Fuzzy. Yeah. Or uh, what was this? Uh, Al-Assad? Not Al-Assad. That's Syria. Um, God oh. dang it. What was the city just north of Baghdad with the big airfield? I can't. Now I'm getting fuzzy. So anyway. I made my Google Earth. Out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, did, did, you guys, did you guys just fly straight to uh, McCord? No, no, no. Uh, we stopped at uh, in Maine. Okay, banger. Yeah. Yep. Get drunk. No, no, no. We no. fucking flew right out. Uh, oh, after didn't that. even let you no. off the aircraft. Okay. All right. So then you're back at Fort Lewis, and that's end of '04. You get back. Yes. Okay. And then you didn't get out until '06. You said. Uh, '05. Oh, '05. Oh, so then, what do you do? Are you? Re- did you just immediately start out? So processing? this is the funny thing. While I was in country, mm-hmm. and everybody asked me the same fucking question. I don't care. Um, so, um, while I was in country, um, they saw it fit that I could be a squad leader. So they promoted me to, uh, E6. Mm -hmm. Um, I went through the boards and everything there, which is kind of fucking funny. Yeah. Uh, while you're in the, while you're in country. Yeah. In country. And they promoted me to E6 and then, um, they were going to give me a squad and, uh, first Iron Swift, awesome fucking guy. Like I was telling you, um, he's off, he has a, he's from, um, not Guam, Philippines. He's from the Philippines. Um, he has a funny little voice like me. Yeah. He's a fucking mother. <laughs> and <laughs> <laughs> and uh, he was always mad at me because my fucking charges were fucking huge. But you, if you, you know that in, to get into houses or get into your objectives in Iraq, uh, you have to go through a fucking front gate first yep, the big into the gate. courtyard. Yep. And then there's another fucking gate to get into the house. Yep. And even then, there's probably another fucking then door. Then a door, in. yeah. And um, those fucking gates... They're fucking, they're steel. I yeah. don't know what they're fucking made out of. So yeah, I had to up. make my charges huge, right? <laughs> Water impulse charges and blah, 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 and this and that. And I was blowing shit up left and right. And then uh, <laughs> first Iron Swift <laughs> was always getting mad at me. Maya, you didn't need that much fucking C4 and fucking deck cord. Come on, Maya. So um, uh, one time we uh, fucking blew up uh, the inside, inside the courtyard, the fucking second gate. And inside... Um, we're, we're like fucking going in and I see this little sheep and all its fucking innards are fucking coming out. Like <laughs> looking up at me going, eh, eh. And I'm all like, ah, oh, fuck. And everybody was like fucking cracking up at the same time. But, yeah. You know, we were fucking clearing this house. Jeez. And they're all like, mata fucking first K, fucking little Pull sheep. sheep. <laughs> Poor thing. Uh, but um, it, it is what it is. And um, you, you were asking about memorable times in the Iraq. Uh, the same one that we went into that time. Fuck, I don't know if I can tell this one live. Um, let's just say that um, down there, they don't treat women the same. No. And uh, we're trying to get some intel off of this uh, this lady, the wife of this person. And um, she didn't want to tell us anything because uh, she told us that he would beat her if yeah. he told her anything. Yeah. And... Uh, um, I'm all like, who? This fucker right here? And we were using an interpreter, of course. Yeah. And uh, he beats you? And she's like, you know, not wanting to say yes, but you yeah. can tell. Yeah. So you beat him. Um, no, somebody, quote unquote, somebody. He fell down the stairs, yeah. I heard. Yeah. I don't know what happened to him. Yeah. I have not. But um, she, she, she told us afterwards, and okay. we took him with us. Yeah. And uh, we did find some fucking weapons cache in that objective. So Nice. I mean, it, it all came good, but um, it is what it is. That's a whole other fucking world, and politics are yeah. way fucking different. Dude, today. yeah. No, no, people who try to judge who've never been there, fuck you. Because it's, like you said, it's, it's until you experience it, you can't, you can't understand how it works. When, when you're finding a weapons cache, what is that? What is that? mean or look like or are you like it can be as small as an ak-47 and a couple old cases of russian Mm -hmm. rounds or like in afghanistan it was scary because we would go like we'd we'd get the you know someone would rat it out we'd go get the house and then we'd go down into this basement and it's old russian ordnance like Mm -hmm. mortar rounds we found some of that too yeah grenades and shit and it's unstable so then it's like oh fuck like you blow it up in place and fucking blow up the whole fucking building in their home or do yeah. you try to fucking remove it and 
blow yourself up as you're fucking renewing yeah. it. So and a lot of times we'd remove it and put it in a oh. Humvee and drive it out in the middle of the desert to blow it, it up. Yeah. And that was sketchy shit. In place. Yeah. yeah, I w- I was always a fan of blow it in place. But that's what the Afghanis were using against you guys. Yeah, old I Russian mean, the munitions. Old Ru- yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Goddamn Soviets. Yeah, yeah. Um, okay, so then you. Uh, did you, so when you get back to Fort Lewis, are you just out processing, basically getting out of the army? Yeah. So, um, I, like I was telling you about First Iron Swift, he's all like, "All right, Mata, I'm gonna give you this fucking squad," and I'm all like, um, "I think I'm getting out." Yeah. He's all like, "Motherfucker, why did I fucking promote you?" <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because you're and, trying to entice me to stay in. Uh huh. So, um, no, I, I had about eight months left. Yeah. And um, what did I do in those eight months? That's what everybody was fucking asking me. Yeah. I was just fucking getting up, doing PT, and getting drunk. Yeah. That's about it. <laughs> yeah. For fucking eight months. So, sounds like the infantry. <laughs> yeah. And um, I know that sounds fucked up, but it's the truth. Um, I had, we were li- I was living off post because I was getting BAH because I was married. Yeah. And um, I was. Claudia was still in LA. Yes. Uh-huh. Okay. She fuck. <sighs> I'm going to get so much fucking hate for this. But um, <laughs> she fucking hates Washington. Yeah. And I concur. Yeah. Yeah. Um, She's, she's what what about Washington wh- do you hate? Every no, I'm playing. Um, the people mostly. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no, no, the weather, dude. The weather, one hundred percent. Oh, absolutely. I mean, it's it's beautiful out here, but one, look at look at outside. <laughs> look look at that yeah. window right there. We we have a flood warning in effect. What's the? <laughs> <Yeah. name? laughs> I, I come from LA. I left and it was eighty degrees when I left on Thursday, yeah. Wednesday, Wednesday. Oh shit! And oh, it's a. F- Huh? Rough winter for you guys, yes, huh? Yes, yes. Yeah. Last year, actually, we had a rough winter. We, we got, got down into got the down 50s. Got down to 70s. 50s. Oh, oh man. Yeah. Um, but, and it was raining a lot last year. Yeah. But, but, no, no, what I'm trying to say is, like, That's I'm a city boy. I mean, everybody says, oh, I'm a country boy, and blah, 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 and this and that. I do listen to country. <laughs> <laughs> the military fucking influenced me, and my kids, like, look at me, and they're like, what the fuck is this guy listening to? <laughs> I like uh, heavy metal. Uh, thank you, Andy Pantera, fucking Simple Terra, yeah. uh, uh, you STP, and fucking all this other yeah, fucking shit. Nirvana I listen to everything. Yeah, Nirvana. Yeah. Yeah. Fuck it. I listen. I'm all over the fucking place when it comes to music. But, um, but what do I dislike about Washington? I think the first thing is just the just rain. White rain. Yeah, and I'll say I'm from That's eastern. Nasty. I'm from eastern Washington, and my first winter over here, I was like, what. It's been raining for like seven days, and someone was like, "Yeah, it, it's going to rain for like another three months, bro. Yeah, Let's get more, ready. Nine yeah. days. And you know, growing up over north of Wenatchee, I thought, "Well, that's not normal. Like, do, you mean it, it just keeps raining for three, six months?" And they're it's like, a little yes. drizzle. Yes, it does. It it just rains and rains and rains for months and months and months. And yeah, and it's it's rough. You guys have a uh, Mount Rainier on the back of your license plate, and I kept yeah. on asking, "What the fuck is that?" <laughs> what the fuck is that? And they're like, "Oh, that's Mount Rainier. You can't see it right now, but uh, <laughs> it's, it's right over there." there. <laughs> and then uh, the first time I saw it, I jump out of a fucking C one thirty on uh, what airfield is that? Uh, uh, Gray Army Airfield. Gray Army, yeah. yeah. And uh, I, I, my parachute opens. I'm like, "All right, I'm good." And I'm like, "Oh, that's what they're fucking." That's talking what's about. on the license plate. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, that was in March, I think it was, and I All got right. there in late December. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, the first time you could actually see the yeah. mountains was four months later. Yeah. March sounds yeah. right. Yeah. All right. So did you move straight back to LA when you got out? Yes. Okay. And uh, right into college then? Yeah, right into college. Um, got my undergrad and graduate degree using my GI Bill. What's that like going to college with a bunch of kids fresh out of high school that are like... You're fresh off a year of Mosul. Yeah. Like just like you dumb little fuckers like have no clue. I, I've never, and that also goes into, like, like my political fucking views and stuff like that. I just keep it myself. Yeah. yeah. I'm a very, like. <sighs> you're with your girl at the same time, so you're not going through the yeah, run, run and draw them yeah. hood rats. Yeah. No, 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 no. <laughs> I, I never, I never partied. I never, and when I did, got drunk and this and that, it's always with, like, my family and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, I'm not a big fucking going night, night clubbing or. Or this and that. Neither is my wife. And by this time, I've already been married to my wife about four years and been together for like about six years. So, so it's business. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah. And um, I'm always like, uh, like 
Andy says all the time, you know, live and let live kind of a thing. You know, you guys do you, I do me. Yeah. And um, there was only some instances, but I, I started seeking help early, like I told you, with yeah. that whole Absolutely. event and with the car. Um, but for the most part, I'm a very quiet guy. I'm talking a lot right now because you're asking me questions. You're asking me to tell you all this stuff, but I'm always in the background just listening to shit. I think another thing that you guys also say in your – the biggest thing a person can do is just sit back and listen. Mm -hmm. And you learn more from fucking just listening to people. And you guys were talking about when you guys were going through, like, a, a triple canopy fucking training. It's like, you know, you don't try to put in your SOPs as you're fucking trying to go through training. You just shut up and listen and yeah. fucking, if they tell you to do A and B, you do fucking A, B. That's yeah. it. Yeah. You don't try to do A, B, and C and try to act like all hua and shit. And I hate that word. But and and that's why I said it. And that's why I'm disappointed it. in you for using it. No, no, no. <laughs> what is that? What is? That? I'm not. I'm not even. I won't even. Discuss no, no. It. And that's why I'm trying to say, like, you know, you don't try to act all who. It's like a fucking army stupid terminology army that shit. fucking is stupid as fuck. It's, it's the dumbest thing the army's yeah. ever come up with, uh, uh, hands down. Stop, stop. It's like um. It's just a thing that mouth, they make mouth you yell closed, and ears and, open. You're yeah. trying to stand out amongst amongst everybody else. Yeah. Don't don't don't. You know, I don't tell my war story. Well, I guess yeah, I don't who. No, who? Uh, Jordan. <laughs> Shut I will shoot you. <laughs> <laughs> I found my new favorite word. <laughs> uh, no, 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 no. no. Oh, <laughs> man. Um, shit, I lost my thought. I had Sorry, it and I boys. lost it. That's, that's, what, that's what I do here. Oh, <laughs> it's all good. It's all right. When, all right. when did you start? When was your first child born? 2011. 2011. So, okay. so um, my wife went through, um, while I was in the military, she started fucking nursing school, but because, you know, we kind of grew up a little bit rougher than most, but like I said, I don't fucking make my problems anybody else's. Um, I helped her go through fucking nursing school through uh, while I was in the military, mm -hmm. and uh, she graduated in 08 with her BSN, which is Bachelor's in... Bachelor of Science uh, Nursing? Yeah, something like that, yeah. whatever it is. And um, she, uh, she became a nurse right after that, uh, and... Uh, Started working for that same company that I told you earlier. Um, and I, I graduated in 2010 and got my graduate degree in 2013. And um, my internships led me to a fucking job. Yeah. And um, they wanted me. I, I became, I graduated under um, nutritional science. So I became a dietitian. But um, that led me into taking over a department, uh, food and nutrition, and then from there, I also got EVS, which is Environmental Services, and then I got Materials Management, and I did this, this, and that. Got promoted to director, and just got. We're, we're talking in a hospital. Just yeah, at a hospital I, now. I, I just realized I do electrical work in hospitals, so I know all these terms. But if people are listening, we're we're talking specifically about a large hospital. Yeah, and um, the Kaiser that I worked at was is the largest hospital in Los Angeles. Um, I don't want to say their names because there's some, I'll get into it a little bit, but there's some litigation going on and stuff like that. Okay. But um, I had my first son, my first child, my boy Titus, uh, in 2011. And he was born just fine and everything. But he, he at first when he came out, um, we noticed some some stuff on him. Um, it's um, Cafe Olay markings. Mm -hmm. Um these uh, spots on his body. And um, we were all like, oh, that's odd. Kind of weird, but I guess it's a birthmark, whatever. Yeah. And uh, three months later, he was kind of like not growing. Yeah. But um, he was getting chubby. Okay. So um, we're all like, what the fuck is this? So we took him in, and there were some tests done, and all these things were happening. And uh, come to find out that my son was born with McCune-Albright syndrome. Okay, so you're going to have to explain that one for everyone. Um. <laughs> I don't know it all myself, but um, McCune-Albright syndrome is a very rare disease, and there's not a lot of research going on on it. But um, the ways, reason he was getting chubby is because his adrenal glands were uh, overproducing cortisol, and they were stunting his growth. So cortisol main duties or main fucking thing is to, during fight or flight, you know, if you're going to fight, you get fucking blood running faster. You get all those fucking things that, you know, metabolism starts going and fucking... So you're ready to fucking fight. Yeah. 
and it shuts down almost everything else. So uh, that's why he okay. wasn't growing. Got it. And um, because of that, uh, we took him in, and uh, they were going to do an adrenalectomy, which is like removal of the adrenal gland. Oh, shit. But um, we started doing some, um, and this is why I'm like, I'll get into that right now. But um, <coughs> he started taking some um, medication, uh, methyropone. And um, it was a, it wasn't used for, for the treatment of adrenal glands just yet. It was kind of um, in test in Germany. Mm -hmm. And they said that it would decrease the adre adrenal production. Okay. But um, so, and they only came in like these hard little pills. And, you know, I had to cut them open, suck everything out of them and try to feed it down to a fucking Infant. eight month year yeah. old and, yeah. or five month old and. It was the most difficult thing. It tasted fucking horrible. Yeah. And, uh, but we got it done. And uh, I used to stick it in the back of his throat and just fucking slobber it down and give him, yeah. throw down orange juice with it. And he got so used to it. And he was getting poked like every month, blood drawn and blah, yeah. blah, blah. To the point where, you know how kids cry when they get poked for, you know, vaccines and this and that. Yeah. He'd come over, fucking put his arm out and just fucking. Just take it. Take Damn. It. Yeah. So. He's been through a fucking lot more than I have. And as he grew up, um, he developed uh, fibrous dysplasia. So the best way I can describe that is, um, and these are all diseases that come under the umbrella of McCune Albright's. Okay. And um, the best way I can describe that, and this is a different disease. This is um, uh, my, my uh, God damn. Have you guys seen that movie uh, Glass with um, mm -hmm. with uh, what's his name Samuel L. Jackson? Mm -hmm. Yeah, he has uh, something in Perfecta. Fuck, what is it called? Um, oh, the one with Bruce. No, it's not called Glass, is it? Uh, yeah, there's, a movie there's it's a, it's a sequel to that one. <laughs> oh, okay, yeah. okay. Um, the Unbreakable, the Unbreakable, yeah. and then yeah. Glass. Yeah. So um, he has uh, something in Perfecta. I'm blanking out right now. Sorry. That's yeah, all right. But um, his bones are fucking weak, right. and but my son has. Uh, fibrous dysplasia, which is pretty much like lesions on your bones. Okay. So just a long story short, by the time he was 10, he's had already seven, six, seven surgeries, Oof. broken his bones five, six, seven times. Oh, man. He started with his tibia, yeah. broken Oof. his femur four times. Oh. One time while in a cast, he broke his femur. Oh my God! Um, spica cast. Uh, if you guys know what a spica cast is, like from ankle down to like fucking chest area. Oh man! So I love him. I love my son to death, and he yeah. has the fucking balls bigger than mine, and he yeah. is, he's awesome. In this spica cast, he was still fucking crawl around, move around, oh, and shit. he has a little hole cut out in his bottom so that you know I could hover him over a fucking toilet, and yeah. he has to relieve himself and so on and so forth, yeah. and. Um, you know, it's it's been a little difficult trying to explain <laughs> to a three year old, four year old why they're in a spica cast. Not and a fucking little difficult. Yeah. Two o'clock in the morning while they're fucking crying and oh, man. you know trying to do all these things. So we're very overprotective about him. Oh yeah. I wanted to throw him in the mats as soon as he was fucking out, but <laughs> obviously we can't do that. Yeah. Um, I've been a big component of fucking jujitsu just like Andy since I started it. Yeah. And um. It's just fucking hell. He's the kid's been through fucking hell. Like all, my stories are like whatever compared to him. Yeah, born in twenty eleven. So he's, is he twelve now? Yeah. Okay. And um, he fucking. And this grew, is this is a lifetime. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. He grew wise, and he's uh he's a lot smarter. I, I've all, I'm like fuck. He has like more wisdom than I had at twelve, and yeah. he he speaks to people, and he speaks to them, and like in a. Like, he knows things. And I'm yeah. just like, fuck, dude. How did you get so smart? But then oh. again, he's been through more than. Yeah. And also my daughter, Kyrie, she's, uh, she was born in 2012. So while we were going through all this, we had, you know, uh, we had the surprise of a lifetime with uh, Kyrie. <laughs> and uh, raising two fucking. So then, you've, then you've got an infant Irish, while you're yeah, dealing with. Raising yeah. two Irish twins only 13 yeah. months apart yep. is fucking awesome. Thank yeah. God she was. She's been awesome. She's she, easy. She was an easy baby. Yep. As she's getting older, she's going to fucking whoop my ass. <laughs> she comes over and fucking rear, 
rear naked chokes me all the fucking time. And <laughs> <laughs> that's her like life go- life uh, life goal, trying to fucking sneak up on me and fucking yeah. choke you, choke yeah. dad out. Perfect. Um, so, so does Titus go to school and everything? Is, do you guys have to be really careful about? Yes, uh, I mean he's everything. Been, he's been in school in a wheelchair, fucking IEPs. If you guys know, like individual educa- education, individual education pro- program. Okay. Or plan or whatever it is, plan. Uh, and um, he's been on the IEP since he was little, yeah. and um, he's been pushed around in school all all year. Or he's walked around, but then he get he get uh, he's get, he gets let out because he's in junior high now, five minutes early before everybody else gets out, so that he's walking the hallways by himself, yeah. so he doesn't get bumped and yeah. accidentally pushed down and break yeah. something because. It's so bad that one time he went up to hug his cousin when they came over. Yeah. That he broke his uh, radar on the humerus. Yep. Jeez. Uh, as he was coming up and he just fractured <sighs> it. It's it just, w- when it's going to happen, it's going to happen. We walk yeah. around with a fucking brake kit in our fucking no shit. car and yeah. with us all the time. Uh, old C, C, C splint and uh, ace bandage and fucking wrap them up. And when you're r- running around from the pool carrying your son with a broken fucking femur, trying yeah. to get him to the fucking oh, paramedics. It, yep. Nothing else in the world fucking matters to No, you. no. Oh, man. It makes me sad just thinking about it. And, uh, yeah, but it is what it is. You know, fucking God fucking gave me this fucking path and yeah, uh, has tested me through my life and fucking uh, I'm fucking dealing with it. Walk through it, right? Hmm. Hopefully, um, Hopefully, I come out stronger in the other end, and he does also. Yeah. My daughter, you know, I, I you know, PTSD and shit like that. Um, I think that, you know, she's fucking witnessed a lot of shit because, you know, it's yeah. me, you know, fucking seeing him break and stuff like that. I can calm myself down to. You can function in the moment, yes. but she is, she's just bearing witness. Yes, and, and yeah. she's fuck, dude. So it's all over the place with that shit. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Fucking yeah. She's learning from that, though. I you know. I think she's going to be stronger about. She 100%. loves him to death. Um, he's he's a he's a little boy like everybody else. She fucking hates his sister and wants to punch her and this and that. And I'm like, <laughs> you're going to fucking hurt yourself while you're trying to punch your yeah, sister. Yeah. Calm the fuck she's down. Going to rear naked your ass. Yeah. And I talk to him just like this. I curse a fucking lot. I yeah. don't. I, I don't know if you guys noticed. What? We we just broke Jordan of it. <laughs> <laughs> just barely. Yeah. I'm, I'm just out of my fuck phase. <laughs> And um, and they hear me all the time, and I'm all like, until you guys are able to fucking pay your own fucking bills, yeah. you guys don't curse. Yeah. Not in front of me. There you go. That's I, I tell my boys the same thing. I let them cuss when they're with me, which is funny because my younger one, he's eight, and it's like he's celebrating the F word, basically. <laughs> makes makes no sense what he's saying, but he's he's just he's just getting them out there. Oh, no, but, my, uh, my kids don't, don't say it at all. Oh, right. Well, but they they might I, say it in... You know, yeah. with our friends, closed and shit, doors, like, yeah. but not with me. Okay, or I tell mom. Them time, yeah. time and place appropriate. Yeah, like is this an appropriate? Like if we're out in the woods and it's just the boys, it's an appropriate time and place. Have at it. But if we're around, you know, if we're in the house and there's women around or at school, obviously, like it's not time and place appropriate. And they get that. Sorry, I derailed you. No, no, no. It's um, cool. cool. So, we've so got, that's what I've been dealing that for with. Uh, last few years but um and then it gets there's even more right with with the covid and oh that's fun yeah yeah so i'm sure you guys all dealt with fucking covid and um so everybody was fucking um getting sent home and couldn't come out of fucking the house and yeah everybody overreacted a little bit (laughs) just like whatever a little more than a little bit and they closed down everything and like i said i was in part of one of the major hospitals here in there in Los Angeles, and uh, our work just ramped up a little bit more, and uh, going back and forth, and then, um, you know, getting those text messages from fucking the teacher, oh, uh, Titus can't, you know, can't get on the computer, can you go help him? I'm like, hey, dick, how the fuck you want me to help him? I'm at fucking work. Yeah. And um, so, yeah, whatever. Um, So, COVID hit, right? And um, my... I've told you about my wife. She's an RN. She's a peeps nurse. Yeah. Um, we're not anti-vax. We're not fucking crazy about that shit. And um, obviously, she fucking is a big advocate about 
vaccinating kids and stuff like that against polio and other fucking, you know, sure. keeping up with uh, the ones, the vaccines that actually have been make tested. Sense. Yeah. Exactly. It makes sense. And we've been out there. But she also knows that some shit that just came off the shelf like five seconds ago is something that she doesn't want in her body and doesn't want her touching her kids. And uh, imagine that. Um, she's all like, hon, I don't want to take this vaccine. And like I told you earlier, I don't give a fuck. I, I was like, oh, okay. I don't care, but all right. Yeah. And she's all like, no, I really don't want it. And I'm like, all right, cool. Then, you know, I back you up 100%. She's been backing me up since fucking, fucking day, one. day yeah. one high school and shit. We've been through thick and thin. And uh, I'm all like, this is what you feel like. This is what you feel like. You know, cool. No problem. And, uh, you know, they were putting on the pressure on us. I being a director, they were asking me to get people on board with vaccination and blah, blah, blah. And I was just like, oh, all right, whatever. Used to go up to the guys and be all like, you know, my people. I can't say the guy's name. But, but um, used to go up to them and be all like, hey, you guys want to get vaccinated? You know, it's up to you guys. A lot of them were like all about it and stuff yeah. like that. And I was just, and some would be all like, hey, uh, Manny, uh, I really don't want to get the vaccine. And I'm all like, I don't. Don't. I'm not getting it. But they might fucking fire me. And I'm all like, I don't know, dude. I don't know what yeah. to tell you. Yeah. I don't know what to tell you. Uh, I'm going to put in an except, exemption. I know my family's putting in an, an exemption. But um, from there, I don't have an answer. I really don't. And uh, long story short, uh, they threatened my wife and I with, you know, getting fired. We put in our exemptions. Mine's was accepted. My wife was not exempted. And there were religious insect exemptions. And um, I, I believe in God. I mean, I believe in a higher being. I always have. Uh, being tested in life with my rollover and uh, Titus and everything else. I mean, I believe in something. And I believe in, in something my mom taught me since I was young. And my whole fucking military career, I carried a cross that my wife gave me on my dog tags. And so I carried my, my wedding ring and the cross on my fucking dog tags out throughout it. I believe that that had a big part in saving me and getting me through the shit that I went through. Yeah. And um, they came back and they told my wife that they felt that her religious inception was insincere. Fuck while my, those people. While mine was accepted. Is it because I was a director and leadership role and she was part of the fucking line? Worker B, yeah. I don't know. Is it because there was fucking uh, focus groups that didn't fucking talk to each other? All these fuckers are married and, you know, if we deny one, we should deny the other one. Or if we accept one, we should accept the other one. I don't know. But they, they, they terminated her beginning of 2021? Because that made sense to fire nurses in 2021 we're in the middle of a... Oh, yeah. Jesus. Yeah. I don't want to get into yeah, how sorry. the hospitals were handling it, how it was in the hospitals. I'm not going to fucking talk about all that because I know what I saw. We can talk about it later, but yeah. let's just say I'm here. Yeah. And um, if there was, there's pandemics that fucking hit the world before and populations were fucking wiped out. Yeah. Traffic in LA continues to be the fucking same. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No shit. Yeah. I, I am no genius. I'm not a fucking yeah. epidemiologist. I'm not fuck I don't study fucking I'm I'm fucking dumb as fuck. Like Andy says all the time, I'm a fucking knuckle driver. And uh but I can open my eyes and see that there's something weird. Yeah. And fuck that. Nobody has the right to fucking tell my wife. That her religious... She's not sincere enough. She's not sincere enough to believe in her bird line. Enough. Yeah, fuck off. Yeah. I don't care if you believe in Buddha. I don't give a fuck if you believe in fucking the Green Goblin. I don't fucking care. It's just... Fuck you. Yeah. I wanted to choke somebody. Yeah. That comes down to paperwork. That comes down to numbers and who we can sacrifice and who we can't. That's... that's Who sits at a desk and says, Oh, this this writing here is sincere with their belief system. 
Fuck you. It's that's, not, that's, it's that's not a, even that they cared whether lie. it was sincere no. or not. They're Period. just looking at how what what excuse can we put on this paper to reject this uh, yeah. this exemption? Okay, so now it goes back to what we got. I think we talked about it earlier about money, right? Yeah, yeah, one hundred percent. What's can we the main thing that we're fucking looking at? Money, right? In a company, you could fucking cut down on fucking printing paper. You could cut down on fucking machines that you buy, equipment that you buy, fucking big cranes, small cranes, you know, going to electricians, fucking a screwdriver, blah, blah, blah. You cut down on all that. What is your most expensive fucking thing on the books? Labor. Human beings. Yeah. If you're getting paid so much, it's not just that much that you're getting paid. You have to add on like another 30, 40 percent. Because of uh, health insurance and blah 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 and yep. whatever other fucking benefits, all the, overheads, yeah. all the so you know if you're making a hundred thousand dollars a year or whatever, just throwing out a number there, that person actually costs like 130, 140. To so get 130, 140 thousand dollars off your fucking, you can never fucking do it any other way but but by cutting fucking people. Yeah, and I've been in fucking financial fucking meetings in fucking big fucking. Corporate fucking America fucking jobs where they talk about it's labor. Labor's the fucking most expensive thing. Yeah. And then what do you need to fucking? What do you which need is to which is why AI backfill? and robotics are coming. Yeah. Huh? Yeah. Sorry. I, Go ahead. Dig- digressing again. I said which is why AI and robotics are coming. Oh yeah 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 yeah. And that whole thing. I think you guys talked about it too. Like what, what, why was why is Governor Newsom fucking uh, bringing up the wages for fucking uh, like McDonald's? Uh, what is it? Fast food. Oh, because it, it, it forces it forces automation. Yes. It forces companies exactly. to have to automate to survive. Yes. And ah man, we can we can have a whole fucking conversation. Yeah, that, that's a whole other <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. So in other words, I um I took a little retreat up here in Washington, like the state that I love. I I guess I'd like to mm-hmm. you guys. The beautiful <laughs> yeah. and I sunny summer, state of Washington. A, a summertime retreat. I saw I saw a couple of times uh, a couple of my friends here. We went fishing. Down in the Columbia River, some salmon fishing. Took my son. He fucking loved it and enjoyed it. And I'm all like, man, this little city boy is like, fuck. He's all about hunting and, and like, and fishing and this and that. I, I, I didn't grow up in that. But he somehow loves it. But here's the, here's the thing. He can't really be out in the woods because if he breaks, how the fuck am I going to get him? Get to extract him. Yeah. Uh, it, it's just difficult. So. That's why I'm, like, not against fucking hunting or anything like that. I just For me, it's just, and my son, it's just not. There's some, what, what there's some are, tags he could get. What day are you guys flying little, home? Uh, Tuesday. Do you want to, we, we, okay, let's talk after the recording because we've got some twenty two rifles. Would he want to come out to the range and just plink around a little bit? He'd love that. Okay. But, um, yeah, let me, let, let, let's talk about okay. it, yeah. Okay. He'd love that. He loves fucking shooting. I just got him a fucking... It's a Smith and Wesson. It's like an AR platform, but it's a twenty two. Oh, chamber yeah. twenty two. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and he loves that shit. He's had a little cricket. Yep. Yeah. Since yep. Uh, he was small. Okay. Um, so he knows how to shoot and everything, and he's yeah. pretty safe with weapons and stuff like that. And uh, not to get into guns in California and stuff like that, but um, I don't give a fuck what they pass or don't pass. Yeah. No, same way. It's just. The cholo down the street is going to have some fucking weapons. Don't worry. I, I you know, Yeah. I can. You, you'll acquire some. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So back to COVID and they fired your wife because her she's not sincere enough in her beliefs. And what comes next? Um, so we're both out of a job. Uh, oh, so so I come down to li- uh, I come down to fishing with my friends and I, you know, reflect and I'm just like. I can stay in my job. I can get the vaccine. I can, you know, take care of my family and this and that, blah, blah, blah. And I was just like, no. And I was listening to Greg. I was listening to you guys. And I was like. <laughs> get fired. I, I, <laughs> there's I hope your you mistake. didn't heed me. Uh, <laughs> that stuff from us. I, I, Greg has always had that little. Uh, yeah. yeah. And I love him for it. I mean, he used to get mad at me because I listened to all kinds of shit. And he's all like, no, not a. Pantera. Ah. <laughs> okay, dude, hang on. I got I gotta tell a story then. Then drug you out over his shoulder fireman carry style and ran you back to my car and threw you in the back seat and we drove you home to Fort Lewis. <laughs> and the next morning you were like, guys, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Oh. Fuck. 
lot uh, of stupid shit. Yeah. Um, what was I going to say? Uh, oh, yeah. So I got back from this trip and I was reflecting on all this. And I walked into my boss's job and I'm all like, um, here's my resignation letter. As of today, I'm out. Yeah. And Good for you. And uh, he's all like, why? What happened? You know, we can't, you know, you need to stay. How are we going to replace you? You're fucking vital. I'm like, Dude, we're good. Yeah. And he's all like, why? And this and I'm like, if you don't know, cool. Mm-hmm. Then you don't know your people. Mm-hmm. And like Greg always says, if you don't know your people, then what the fuck are you doing there? Yeah. Um, I'm sure they didn't fucking cry over it. But they probably just stressed because to them, to them, they're not concerned about you. They don't care about you. What they care about is their workload. And yeah. now they're like, oh, crap, now I have to do more and I have to figure more out and I oh. have to figure out. So they felt bad for themselves because they just increased their workload, but they don't think about it in what's so broken in America right now, especially at, at corporate leadership, is nobody is thinking about people. They're only thinking about themselves, how to get themselves up the next rung of the ladder and how to make their life more easier. They don't think about, like, my my philosophy, like, is when it comes to, like, running my crew is I work for them. They don't work for me. I work for them. And it's my job to make sure they have a good day, a good week, and a successful project. And it's not, I don't look at it the other way around, where they're there to make me look good so that I can get up that next rung on the ladder. That takes care of it all by itself if I focus on taking care of them. Mm-hmm. And that, that is completely fucking lost in, in corporate America today. It is. It is. And that's 100%. I mean, I know my guys are, I keep on calling my guys, but my crew, mm-hmm. I had like um, 100 people under me or something like that. Yeah. And, uh, you know, yeah, there, of course, there was people that didn't like me or the way I handled things. But sure. for the most part, 90% of the people were, I, I think they, they were sad to see me leave. And um, I told them, you know, last minute, I'm out, you know, this and that. And they're all like, but why? And I'm all like, I, I wasn't going to be there and telling them my whole story and stuff like that. But, you know, I'm all like, it's just, I, I'm done with this shit. Yeah. And they kind of saw it coming. But even now, you know, they still call me up. They're all like, when are you coming back? Yeah, and I'm like, nah, nah, I'm I'm through with that place. Yeah, I'm I'm done with everything. So, um, that that that's kind of where we're at right now. Yeah, my wife my wife kind of went back into. Well, we'll we'll leave it at that. I don't I don't know because there's yeah. some litigation going on. Okay, and um, we are fighting it. Yeah, and Good. uh, it takes forever because yep. uh, yep. the wheels of justice are very fast and. They're always uh, on time and blah, blah, blah. And <laughs> yeah, I'm being facetious and fucking stupid, but <laughs> it takes forever. Yeah. And um, I don't, I don't, personally, I don't see it going anywhere. I really don't. No. Um, I don't think it's going to, it's going to affect anything or do anything, but at least she's fighting about it. And, you yeah. Know, yeah. Uh, it, making it, well, you never know if enough people, I, I don't know. I, I go back and forth. Part of me thinks nothing will ever change, and part of me thinks that there's going to be a reckoning because a lot of people's lives were ruined in that pandemic intentionally. And I, th- I mean, that's a huge karmic debt that has to come back around. And um, it's a um, – she's part of a big uh, class action lawsuit. Okay. Nice. So there's like um, – I think there's like 500 or something people on yeah. that. And um, – some people have been offered their jobs back. I think she was too, but she, there, you know, yeah, some people are like, "Oh yeah, you know." Yeah, we'd love to come go, back go, and, go and shoulder and the stress for you after you treated us like that. Get the fuck out. Uh, yeah. So, and it's funny because they're not even they haven't recovered from that shit yet. Mm-hmm. But the biggest thing was that you know they wanted to lose all these people because my wife now has some tenure there, yeah. and obviously she makes more money, and a new grad uh, makes less money. Yeah. Kind of a thing. It's always about the fucking money. Oh, sure. Get rid of the, the senior or seniority and the, the junior members are cheaper. Uh-huh. And Interesting. You say seniority and unions and stuff like that, and you guys talk about that all the time. And if I piss anybody off, I don't care. Good. Fucking Good. Un- unions, fucking full of shit themselves, too. Yes, they are. Mm-hmm. They, they uh, tell you they're going to protect you. Jordan and I are part of a union. My, my, my wife, when asked her, her union, like, you know, hey, they're doing that. Yeah, they don't do shit. All, all they're there for is to take your dues, mm-hmm. and then they hang out in the office and, hey, brother, we're, we're working for you. No, you're not. No, you're you're not. taking my money and yeah. not doing a fucking thing. They were invented for something 
or they they were <clears throat> for a cause that doesn't yeah. exist anymore. Yeah, exactly. And um, I th- they, they they only protect being in management. They only protect the fuckers, shitty employees. Yes, and the ones that they shouldn't be fucking protecting. Yep. And the fucking hard workers. Yes. They get fucking screwed in the ass yes. all the time. Yes, they do. And um, I've been through that whole trying to fire people because they're shitty fucking employees. And, you know, it's fucking difficult. Yes. And I have to have a paper trail. Yep. And I've been part of two, three different fucking terminations. And it, they haven't been easy. Yeah. They haven't been easy. But... For other employees that are in the union to come and thank you for doing what you did, yeah, you can tell what kind of the the character of the people that I fucking let go. Oh yeah, and um, it is what it is. Yeah, so we're we're closing in on two hours here. What anything you want to say in closing, or do, like, do you have uh, plans for what's next? Or I'll, I'll kind of leave it up to you. Anything? Any last uh, thoughts? Um. Not, 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 not a lot of last thoughts. Uh, it's still going. I mean, yeah. it is what it is. I haven't found employment. Not because I've, I've been looking and not getting employment. It's just I'm at that point where I'm like, fuck it. Let's just figure shit out. And yeah. um, I have, um, we were well off before. We have some money saved up and uh, uh, buying some property abroad. And, oh. and um, looking at my retirement here fucking soon. No shit. <laughs> uh Hopefully, if everything fucking works out, works well. Um, by the time I hit 50, I'm 44 next month. Uh, 50, 55 or so, I'm, I'm fucking done. I'll, I'll come serve you cocktails in a little skirt Let's if you go. want. I'm still, I'm still thin. <laughs> um, yeah, um, the biggest, I, I made myself a Mexican citizen also. I was born in L.A., so I'm a U.S. citizen, but I'm. I made myself a Mexican citizen so I could own property in Mexico. Hang on. Oh, hang on. I was lease, right? Did yeah. you have to pass a Spanish test to get your Mexican citizenship? Because I remember you failing a fucking Spanish test in the Army. <laughs> <laughs> no, I did not. And thank God my wife, she's fucking fluent in Spanish. I yeah. am also. But she is fucking the smartest person I know. Yeah. And every time I conjugate or fucking say something stupid in Spanish. She's all like, hey, dumbass. Say, a, 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 a retard. Um, so Whatever this gutter Los Angeles dialect you're oh, speaking fuck is. Yeah. 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 She, so she's awesome. And uh, there's nothing else in this world that I want to do but retire with that lady and spend the rest of my days with her and raise these kids together. Awesome. I think that's the perfect note to end it on right there. All right, Mata, thank you for getting on and sharing your story on record. And uh, we'll see you all next week.